more than a few dozen fighters, it's unclear how they can manage it. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. UPI reports shoplifting in Russia increased 44% in 2014 as a result of sanctions and plunging oil prices, according to data collected by the Federal Tax Service. In 2014, merchandise worth 930 million rubles, about 15.9 million US dollars, was stolen from Russian stores. Goods like premium alcohol, sausage, eggs, coffee, cosmetics, and perfume were among the most shoplifted items. Experts told a Russian newspaper that the actual figures could be much higher as the reports count only losses reported to police. Most of the shoplifting took place in Moscow. The falling price of oil, combined with sanctions imposed against Russia by the West in connection with the annexation of Crimea, led the ruble to lose 40% of its value against the US dollar in 2014. These factors contributed to the country's current economic crisis. As the ruble weakened, inflation soared, reaching 11.4% last year. Many Russians continue to live below the poverty line approximately $165 a month. Alexei Kudrin, Russia's former finance minister, recently said the country would not start to recover for another year. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Fiat Chrysler will recall 1.4 million vehicles in the United States to install software to prevent hackers from gaining remote control over the engine, steering, and other systems in what federal officials said was the first such action of its kind. The announcement on Friday by Fiat Chrysler FCA, was made days after reports that cybersecurity researchers used a wireless connection to turn off a Jeep Cherokee's engine as it drove, increasing concerns about the safety of internet-enabled vehicles. The research Researchers used Fiat Chrysler's telematic system to break into a volunteer's Cherokee being driven on the highway and issue commands to the engine, steering, and brakes. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, said on Friday it would investigate whether FCA's solution to upgrade software was enough to protect consumers from hackers, although FCA said in its recall announcement that it was unaware of any injuries. A spokesman for NHTSA said that it was the first recall of vehicles because of concerns about cybersecurity and experts said they hoped it would send a shock through the auto industry and beyond. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Hailing it as the industry's most innovative product to date, global cosmetics brand Maybelline released its long-awaited Ideal Woman Rubber Mask this week, a thick latex facial covering worn over the head in lieu of makeup. By simply yanking it over your face, you can instantly achieve a fresh look that conforms to Western ideals of beauty. Essentially, you can just roll out of bed, stretch the latex urethane rubber beauty mask over your natural face, and boom, you're ready to start your day. Forget concealer, powder, blush, or mascara. Now you can achieve a look that adheres to the conventional standard of feminine perfection in seconds. It's incredible. You immediately see the difference. The very first time I tried it on, my pores were minimized, my skin tone was more even, and all of the idiosyncratic little wrinkles, physical imperfections, and tiny irregularities that make my face unique were erased. I don't spend a lot of time on makeup anyway, but now all I need to do is yank this thing over my head, and that's it. I'm conventionally attractive. I mean, this gives me so much more time to find an outfit that makes my body look thin and socially acceptable. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can join us here and bring up whatever happens to be on your mind. Of course, we always bring stuff to the table to discuss. The week tonight includes me, Ian. And me, King Mark the First. Uh, you're missing your crown, Mark. You've got a very silly crown in this uh, this room. and You're right. Yeah, it's very silly. I'm amazed you actually were able to wear headphones with that thing on. Oh, no, I can wear headphones. That's why I got this particular crown. Oh, it's, it's designed for that? It's plush. Okay. 
So, uh, yeah, there's news, new evidence, according to Gizmodo.com. There's a saying that nothing, there's nothing like going to prison to turn you into a criminal. But now, a new study offers evidence that this homily is statistically sound. Every year a person is kept in prison, according to the study, increases their odds of committing another crime when they're released. And, Mark, you spent nine years, nearly nine years of your life. Eight uh, years, six months, 21 days. In prison. And I imagine you can speak to some uh, personal extent about this. But let's get into a little bit of detail here from Quartz. Allison Schrager, Schrager explains the study, which only deals with the United States. Okay, So a new paper from the University of Michigan economics professor Michael Miller-Smith measures how much incapacitation reduced crime. Incarceration? I think that's what they mean, but it says here incapacitation. That darn spell check. He looked at court records from Harris County, Texas from, eight, from 1980 to 2009. Miller-Smith observed that in Harris County, people charged with similar crimes receive totally different sentences depending on the judge to whom they were randomly assigned. Miller Smith then tracked what happened to these prisoners. He estimated that each year in prison increases the odds that a prisoner would reoffend by 5.6% per quarter. So if you're held in prison for a year, it would increase your odds of reoffending by like 21, more than 20%. 22. Yeah, 22%. Even people who went to prison for lesser crimes wound up committing more serious offenses subsequently, the more time they spent in prison. His conclusion was that any benefit from taking criminals out of the general population is more than offset by the increase in crime from turning small offenders into career criminals. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that this sounds pretty sound when you i mean essentially by putting somebody in prison you're it's the definition of something antisocial right like you take you're taking them away from society um the definition of social and putting putting them someplace else the idea is is to incentivize you know negative incent- incentive um incentivize good behavior and what we see is is that once you get past youthful offenders and juveniles, um, you're you're talking about the chances of reoffending amongst adults getting to something like 85% of them are likely to reoffend. Um, that says to me that we need some better system for handling it. I'm speaking as a person who essentially went to prison one time, um, got out, and I, I guess I'm the success of the prison system, right? Mm-hmm. I would say that I— um, You have not been rearrested since getting out of prison. Uh, yeah, I, I got arrested at the Canadian border for trying to cross through, and I didn't know that it was illegal. Uh, not the same thing. Yeah, I don't think it is. <laughs> not for any crime that involves a victim. No. Um, and, and so— I mean, you know, if if you want to claim I'm a a success of the system, the very least you should be able to say that, well, he's got some experience in this area. I think that uh, the vast majority of people who are put in prison probably could be handled through, uh, you know, house arrest and those sorts of things. Well, because there are a lot of people who are jailed who don't actually have a victim to the supposed crime they committed. Obviously, ending the war on drugs would be a huge boon towards not putting as many people behind prison bar cells and therefore not sending them to what they call gladiator school, uh, where they basically learn how to be a tough guy and wire hot wire cars and things like that. They learn stuff from these other criminals that they otherwise probably never would have necessarily come to know. I learned right. how to hot wire a car within a few months of going to prison. Mm-hmm. I happened to have, be assigned to the auto mechanics class. And I mean, I only really figured out how to hot wire an old Ford, which anybody who knows uh, anything about uh, old cars will be like, well, yeah, th- that's hard. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it looks not hard at all, but um, you know, it's more than I knew at the time. Uh, so why would it be, though? And as they also point out here, remember, they did just study that one county in Texas. So you could say, well, it only applies to that county. But they say here also that within five years of release, these re- recidivism rates are not unique to Texas. More than 75 percent of prisoners are arrested again for something else across the United States. Well, one of the problems is, is that most of them have probation. And oh, yeah. what you're doing is you're taking you're taking somebody who has done something antisocial. You're putting them in a bad place with a bunch of bad people, treating them badly um, and letting them out and expecting them to act good. When you put them on probation, you're not just expecting them to act as a law-abiding citizen, you're expecting them to act better than a law-abiding system. 
student citizen. And the the system hasn't provided them in many way with any kind of, uh, you know, information on how to do this. Uh, yeah, it seems simple to the average person, and I wouldn't disagree. You know, ultimately, all you have to do is not steal something, not hurt somebody, not do this or that. But when, uh, you know, I mean, I, I was amazed at how many people, for instance, would go to confinement where they couldn't have cigarettes, and the first thing they do when they come out is smoke a cigarette. A lot of these people have drug problems. Mm -hmm. So the drug problems are not best dealt with in prison. They are best dealt with in drug treatment centers. Because you can get drugs in prison. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I'm, yeah, I did. So, it definitely doesn't help a drug addict. So the Schrager, one of the authors here, talks about a number of popular theories as to why is it that this happens, the most salient of which is that it is incredibly hard for an ex-con to get a job. Employers don't want a former prisoner working for them, and when money gets tight, it's easier to turn to crime than it is to become homeless or go hungry. What do you think about that, Mark? I got out in 1998. Uh, the job market was very good back then. Um, I decided before I got out that I wasn't going to share this information with people. Ah. If you look at me, um, if you hear the way I speak, you're not going to think, the first thing you're going to think is not, huh, this looks. This guy might be an ex-convict, mm -hmm. right? So I have a, a sort of an inbred privilege, as it were. Um, you know, people aren't going to assume that I'm uh, an ex-con. So I came up with a resume that included places that closed down, right? Like, go find, you know, I worked at this place, that place, the other place. They were very similar to the jobs I'd held. So they described my uh, skill set yeah. reasonably. But they couldn't true. check. But they the couldn't claims. check because the business was out of business. And how do you check? And those what you things? were really doing was uh, you were working the jail. What was it? The canteen? Right. They called it. What, what's the difference between working the staff canteen where I serve coffee and donuts to officers and serve and a working at a store. convenience store? Yeah. I did all the inventory. I did all the ordering and those kind of things. So right. yeah, that was very similar. And I did some roofing while I was in prison. So I put down a roofing company. Mm -hmm. These kind of things. And then I developed a resume after that. And once you have three priors, no one really cares. Now, I mean, it's interesting that you, these days, you were talking about in the late 1990s when you got out of prison. Now we're at 2015. So is it more likely that a, uh, somebody who's hiring for a position is going to run an actual criminal back uh, background check? Or do they rely on you to just sort of self-assess and say, yes, I have a felony? All the information I have is, is that they're going to check mm -hmm. uh, because now the job market's tighter. And it's not as tight as it was two or three years ago, but it's tighter. And... I, and I now they got 200 applications from people, uh, but do, don't they have to pay for background checks? I mean, would they? They wouldn't want to run a background check on everybody. Maybe just the best candidates or something. I think that in many cases you can do a back. Uh, most most ex cons are going to be where they're from because mm -hmm. that way they can live at mom's house. And um, that means that all you have to do is run the background check in, in you know the the county you're at, and that doesn't cost money. That just costs time. So uh, the toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. Maybe you can, if you've been gotten out of jail or prison and you can exp explain your experience or maybe you've seen somebody go through this where they've gotten out and they've reoffended. how can the system be changed to be better about this? How can uh, you know less of this recidivism happen? I mean, your proposal, well, Mark, was to not put people in prison who really shouldn't be there, like drug offenders and things like that. Uh, but but what else? What about the people who actually have violated another person's rights? Is I this punitive believe, system the best system, well, or can we have something better? I'm going to go um, one step further. The fact is, is I don't believe that you belong in prison if unless you are a danger to other people. I think prison should be for people that are dangerous to other people. So I'll go ahead and say that somebody who's violent that can, for whatever reason, has learned their lesson and can stay and do their um, in-home uh, incarceration, that that's fine. I mean, because Like I somebody who was violent one time as opposed to a serial killer or something right, like well, that. Right. Like a serial killer could not uh, contain themselves, right? And they would do something mur um, further. Um, and, you know, you'd have to assess that. That's kind of why we have judges in these systems. But they're, the system's all about incarcerating people. It's Let's a prison industrial complex. Yeah, let's go to your calls and thoughts. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Tell us how you feel about the uh, status quo here and how it can be changed to be a more humane system, or do you want to see more punishment? Is that the answer? 855-450-FREE. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. 
you certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country, with a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers. How can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book. And it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Join us here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. It's the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live, we've got a, a there's a new study out, and certainly not the first study about re recidivism rates, uh, but it's it does show that when somebody looked at uh, one particular county in Texas, Harris County, from 1980, did I say 1890 previously? I think I did. From 1980 to 2009, a little bit of a shorter time frame. Yeah, look, more relevant information there. The uh, individual who did the study found that people who are charged. Uh, with similar crimes, receive totally different sentences depending on the judge in the case. For each year in prison, 
they found that it increases the odds a prisoner would reoffend by 5.6% per quarter that they spent in jail. Even people who went to prison for lesser crimes wound up committing more serious offenses subsequently the more time they spent in prison. So the question, or there's several questions that could be asked about this, but one of them is, you know, if this is true, that the longer somebody spends in prison, the more likely they are to go out and commit a crime. At this point, that's the evidence we have. Then what can be changed about this current system that is arguably creating further crime upon the release. Obviously, the answer is not lock them up forever because you want to make somebody better, right? Somebody should be able to contribute to society at some point into the, into the future. So, Or get shot while doing their crime. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE if you want to join the discussion here. Also, you can join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. Maybe you've worked in a jail. Maybe you've been to prison. Uh, maybe you've got friends or family members that you've seen go through this uh, process of you know having nothing to live for or whatever their problem is when they get out. And you know, not being able to get a job. That was one of the theories is that as a felon, you've got this albatross around your neck and you know, it makes it difficult to live life as a as a normal person. So why not go back to a life of crime? ProXPN.com slash FTL is where you can go to grab some software that will encrypt your internet connection. Whether you're on a smartphone, a tablet, or a computer like a desktop or a laptop, you can get ProXPN, Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Linux. They've got it all over at ProXPN.com slash FTL. And you can start right now for free. And they will encrypt your internet connection, which means your own internet service provider will no longer be able to snoop on you. Criminals won't be able to sniff your Wi-Fi packets to get things like your passwords or bank account information. So this is really good protection, and you can start for free at proxpn.com slash FTL. But when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth. Servers around the world you can access. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. Plus, ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits, and you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Just use code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live, and the number 50, as in 50% off of the regular monthly price. And they get you a great discount on privacy that is priceless. That's proxpn.com slash FTL with code FTL50. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. Our toll-free number again, 855-453-FREE. Scott is first up in Panama City, listening to WYOO. Hey, Scott. Hey guys, how you doing today? Welcome. First, I want to say, uh, listen to your all's program. Uh, thing I like about your program is uh, I don't necessarily agree with what you guys say all the time, but uh, you guys do uh, some provoking thoughts um, and get people thinking. I called in today because I wanted to talk about the uh, incarceration system, and particularly in the state of Florida. And I I'm a little bit biased because currently I have a uh, younger brother of mine that's uh, serving uh, 35 years um, now. Yeah, I don't know how many of like, Americans at this point don't know somebody close to them who's been in, who's incarcerated or has been incarcerated mm -hmm. re relatively recently. I mean, you're talking about a percentage of the population that is growing. Um, I believe that there's something close to two percent of the U.S. population is currently incarcerated. And when you start figuring in the people who've done uh, time uh, beyond that, people, you know, <laughs> it's going to get harder and harder for people to be like, no, never met nobody. 35 yeah, years for, for what, sure. Scott? Well, what what he ended up doing is, is you know, naturally drugs were involved. He was uh, addicted to crack. Anyway, uh, you know, his habit ended up leading him to uh, where he ended up robbing three banks in Tampa Whoa. Bay. And, and, you know, we got 35 years out of the deal. Now, you know, to me, um, I'm not saying that he shouldn't, you know, uh, pay his dues for, you know, what he did. But um, I think when it comes to looking at, um, you know, different cases. I think there's a lot of bias when it comes to certain judges um, on throwing the books at somebody. Now, what I'm bothered with by the fact is that, you know, I, I know for a fact that, you know, we don't do anything with these prisoners to look at, you know, giving them rehabilitation, such as, you know, uh, giving them trades and, and, and things to work on while they're in the prison system. And the other thing that I've seen in a trade it, isn't like, going to do him any good at thirty with thirty five years. I mean, a, a everything trade, he learns is going to be different. He, I mean, by he the might time be able to out. work on small engine repair at the nursing home, but I mean, that's it. I mean, essentially, all they're doing is sentencing this guy to uh, life in prison, and then he'll be released to the care of the state through the worst nursing home in town. Now, we, uh, absolutely. So so, Scott, this guy, uh, he robbed three banks, and you said, you know, he should be paying his dues. However, 
sitting in prison for 35 years doesn't make those banks whole again, does it? Right? Like those banks lost some money and he's not paying them off, is he? No, no, absolutely not. And the sad thing is, by the time it was all said and done, he only ended up getting about seven grand, um, you know, on robbing the banks. That's almost but, always the know, story. I mean, I you, when yeah, you banks hear about, are pretty good at losing, not losing money, right? Yeah, it's usually like two grand or a few grand, or that's that's it. They they go to prison for this small amount of cash, which ultimately wouldn't be that hard for somebody to repay with some interest on top of that, and not have to sit in a prison cell for uh, for thirty five years. Now, I think it should be a punitive oh. amount, but um, at the same time, you know, what's what's really the how does society benefit by putting this guy away for thirty five years? It doesn't. No, we absolutely don't. And what's going to end up happening is, you know, he's going to come out. Um, he's going to have to depend on the state for a living. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're housing him and having to pay a high price every year to keep him in prison. In the meantime, he's really doing nothing but learning to be, um, uh, you know, he's, he's learning to be um, manipulative is what he's learning to be in the prison system. Um, you know, it's just, mm-hmm. there's just nothing really that, 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 sets a good tone for putting somebody in prison for that long length of time when we can look at possibly lowering sentences and and doing some sort of rehabilitation instead of you know right. continuing this vicious cycle is what we're yeah, doing great I point thank you prison, scott thank think, you for the call tonight i appreciate it man i think prison's a great way to shock people out of their uh, their current paradigm right like you you have entered a very negative spiral if what you're doing uh, results in you know say robbing some banks right mm-hmm. like you're hmm maybe making some bad employment decisions and I think prison's a really great way to just like wham, throw you up against the wall of reality that this is a bad choice. Um, yeah, you're not going to want to spend much time there but, once you get introduced. Now to he it. did mention the drugs are involved. I'd like to point out that uh, cigarette addicts rarely rob for their addiction. Yeah, alcohol true. addicts rarely rob for their addiction. Um, heroin, cocaine. Uh, methamphetamines, these things don't cost much to produce. The the added cost all comes from the fact that they're illegal. The The dangerous thing here isn't the drugs as much as the war on drugs. Those people's lives were put in danger by an armed man in a bank because of the government's war on drugs. Yeah, that's certainly true. And because true. of the guy who did it. Unintended consequences uh, on that one. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number here. We're on the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. You can comment on the incarceration system. What's a better way to do this? I think restitution is should be a major player in changing the system for the future. Uh, but there's more coming up. 855-450-FREE. It's Free Talk Live. Measles is activating on a mass scale, now due to the vaccines and iron poisoning. All symptoms, disease, and deaths are due to measles and iron, not just rash and flu-like symptoms, as the officials claim. Measles requires a host with iron to replicate. Iron intake is at an unprecedented level. Deaths and hospitalizations are set to soar now in 2015. This is the extermination plan, people. For further information, go to unveilingthem.com. U-N-V-E-I-L-I-N-G-them.com. Unveilingthem.com. Now a twice as nice Twin Kits special offer from Complete H2O Minerals for all GCN listeners. Get a Complete H2O Minerals Twin Kit with 33 different minerals, vitamins, and amino acids all in a liquid form. Enough for two people for one month. Regular price $89.95. But now Complete H2O Minerals is offering the Twin Kit for $69.95. And all GCN listeners receive a bonus 16-ounce bottle of Ionic Silver absolutely free with free shipping. A $120 total value. Hurry, limited time offer. Call 803-794-4767 or click CompleteH2OMinerals.com. Keenvention is coming up October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. Explore Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel from 2013 on. This year, Activist of the Year Daryl W. Perry and Chris Cantwell will be keynoting. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenevention this October 30th through November 1st. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or pay with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hallow Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at Keenevention.info. Visit Keenevention.info for more speaker announcements or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenevention.info. Keenevention.info. 
So you've signed the Shire Society Declaration and are planning your move to New Hampshire to be around more liberty-oriented people. Next, sign up for the Shire Society Forum at forum.shiresociety.com. There are a bunch of people there who are already in the Shire, and they want to meet you. If you're already in the Shire physically, you should also come by the forums. Remember, not everyone uses Facebook. New people are signing up for the Shire Society Forum every month, so drop in and say hello at forum.shiresociety.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a -a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn. You'll be inspired. You'll make new friends. You'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at cato.org. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE, and you can join us on the radio waves, talk about whatever you would like to discuss, although we have been focusing on uh, the issue of incarceration. And there's new evidence to back up the argument that's long been made by people who've been behind bars and people who've studied people who've been behind bars that uh, going into the prison system actually makes it more likely that the person will reoffend. In fact, the, the study shows now that the longer the person is incarcerated, the more likely the person will reoffend. So if it's one year, then they're saying that's like 20%. If it's just a quarter, it's like 5.6%. Uh, and so just within a few years, you're going up to a very high percentage likelihood that this person is going to commit some other kind of crime, criminal activity, when they get out of prison. You can share your thoughts toll-free at 855-450-FREE. We've also got Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. It's very easy and gratifying to suggest that uh, if somebody commits a crime, that they should be punished terribly. One thing that I remember was a big deal was uh, inmates having cable television. Now, um, let's. We, what we need to consider is, is that there are... 51 at least different uh, prison systems in the United States. And there's actually different ones than that. And then you have to look at Canada and a variety of things. So when you're talking about sort of North America, there's a lot of different prison systems. Yes, some places allow inmates to say, buy a television and keep it in their cell. And yes, these buildings, because they're made of stone and metal, do have, uh, you know, closed circuit television setups. And some of them probably have nicer um you know they, they allow inmates to watch movies and things like that but what they were calling cable television when i was in prison was just a closed circuit television system on the weekends some guards would bring in you know vhs tapes and mm-hmm. play their the movies that they had and and that kind of thing um in, to, in order to entertain us those televisions were purchased through the inmate welfare fund, which was funded through the sale of canteen items to inmates. The profits from selling, you know, bags of chips and sodas and, and wham whams in the uh, in the canteen were then, you know, some of the profits were taken and put away to buy gym equipment and uh, televisions and things like that. Once the crime and punishment crowd got rid of the TVs, 
which, by the way, drove up violence in the prison. Oh, I bet it did. Once they got rid of the televisions, then they went after the weights uh, sets and these sorts of things. Basically, you know, bringing it down to the point that um, all, you, you know, you, you'd had any, nothing but maybe some basketballs or something to play with um, mm. in the prison. And let's not forget that, um, you know, team sports create a certain level of animosity. Team sports oh, yeah. aren't a really great idea in prison. All my experience <laughs> says we should if you wanted to ban something in prison, it should be basketballs, footballs, um, you know, things that you hmm. play um in team sports, not weights and televisions. Let's go to you with your calls and thoughts. We'll start with uh David. He's in North Dakota, uh, listening to KTGO. Hey David. Oh, David, you're a little quiet. I don't know if our board up has you turned up there. Oh, Hey, there you are. Here. Can you hear me? Yes, we have you now. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, you uh, uh, you actually caught me off guard there with the question, uh, but uh, I just wanted to call in uh, from uh, I guess it was nineteen into eighty eight to uh, middle of two thousand and three. Uh, <clears throat> I kind of threw away eleven calendars myself, so I kind of have a little bit of a background in in uh, going to jail and. Uh, I would I would love to answer any questions you have. Do you think that people are more likely um, to commit crime the more time they spend in prison? Um, that has, that has actually been uh, I, I've actually noticed that I really have. Uh, you're, uh, the first, if a person only spends uh, two years or less, a year and a half or less, they're yeah they're less apt to come back. And if they spend six or eight years or more, they're more apt to come back very quickly. Um, Interesting. Did I, you? I have noticed that. What, what are you doing in order to prevent yourself from going back to prison? You know, I uh, I didn't specifically make the decision not to go back to prison. Um, I, I to 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 be honest with you, I don't know what made me make the decision. Um. How long has it been? You, was, you said uh, 2003? Yep. You've been out 12 years. Well, I, yeah, I, I tell you what, uh, uh, I had a heart, to, uh, accidental heart to heart with myself, and I noticed that I was causing other people great pain and discomfort. And Adulthood. That's, yeah, 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 you can call it that. Yeah. And uh, that that's what made made my decision. It, it wasn't uh, any, any punishment or what, any threat of punishment. Uh, believe it or not, uh, prison was actually pretty easy. Yeah. I uh, really believe this, too, that uh, adulthood, uh, if we can do something that brings on adulthood in, uh, you know, offenders, then uh, you'll you'll see just things change. That the, after that point, after that point of realization, every bit of incarceration after that is simply an embitterment program. Mm, yeah. Um, I can tell you well, that— I'd had you're all just the, getting angry at the world and the system. Right? I'd had all the growth I was going to get at about six years. Um, like I'd had all the positive <laughs> thinking that I could, um, you know, all, all the positive thinking in the world was doing all it could at about six years. Everything that happened after year six on up to year eight and a half was essentially me trying to forestall the bitterness that I was ex- uh, experiencing in my heart because of what I considered to be a bad sentence for a crime that was, you know, I, I should not have been convicted of. And fortunately, I was released by an order of the Florida Supreme Court. Um, I didn't get an overturn, didn't get it overturned or anything like that. But, um, you know, I, at that point, I was able to get out of my own. And yeah, I'd had adulthood, but I could never go back to college at that point. At one point, I wanted to go to college and I was just too old for it. They let me out too late. And I'm like, I'm not going to college. Right, David. Thanks. Um, I don't. Go ahead. Uh, I, I think one of the one of the biggest things uh, I I went in uh, four separate times in that in that amount of time, and I'll tell you what uh, majority of them made me return. It was actually the uh, probation and parole system. Yep. Uh, they they almost it's a it's a money deal. I mean it's a, it the state gets federal dollars for every time they send you back. It doesn't matter how long you stay. Really? They get money for that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So so it's a uh, for every program that uh, that they make you go to, the federal government <clears throat> basically pays the state a certain amount of money. I would be careful. Uh, for, um, so where did you get that information? Um, Convicts. Well, matter matter of fact, if you ask them, they'll tell you. Okay. I mean, if you if you find if you find 
uh, an honest uh, parole officer, you find uh, oh goodness, I can't remember. You know, I, I don't I don't have the the actual names. I do a little online research. They actually get money for that. Wow, when, I had uh, never heard about that. I mean, when, I know uh, that probation is a revolving door. These people are constantly is. getting reoffended for VOP, which, of course, almost all the time has nothing to do with actually going out and being violent. It, it usually is a, a, a you know a, a drug test that they don't that they don't pass. David, thanks for the call right. tonight. Well, I appreciate the expertise. Appreciate the uh, the personal experience. Our toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. But I didn't know that the local probation office would get a paycheck for a VOP. That's an interesting claim, and I'd like to see a little bit more about that. Justice Department announces more than $62 million to strengthen reentry, probation, and parole uh, the programs. Hmm. The Justice Department has awarded more than $62 million in grants to strengthen efforts to help people returning from prison join yeah, that's their communities. Not helping. Yeah. Um, Putting them back in prison is not helping them. And you see it all the time. So many people uh, get reoffended, and so quickly. And it's just, it's the probation system is another thing that definitely needs to change. But let's yeah, go to reentry programs. Definitely need funding. Uh, it, I, I don't think the, <laughs> the difficulty is, is that um, I, I don't think any of these programs have a right, a just claim on people's tax, tax paying dollars. But if you want people to not return, we need to come up with systems for that. This isn't working in the United States currently. All right, we're going to hear from you. If you want to share your thoughts, you're welcome to join us toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Maybe you've got experience, or maybe you're the, of the opinion that people need to be punished harder. It seems like all the evidence would be against you in that case, because what it seems like is that the harder you punish somebody, the more likely they're going to continue criminal activity. It's an emotional, visceral reaction. Those are rarely good ones. 855-450-FREE is our toll-free number. This is Free Talk Live. This message is for home intruders, the cowards who break into people's homes to steal their hard-earned property, criminals who shatter lives and rob people of their privacy and security. Listen very carefully. We're the home security experts at LiveWatch, and we're taking you down. Because we're letting everyone try our newest home security system for one full year in their home. To take advantage of this amazing offer, call now, 1-800-670-9259. LiveWatch has been helping protect homes for years, and we've learned the secrets that intruders like you don't want people to know. Criminals, it's time for you to be afraid, because every person who calls will be protected against cowards like you. To the criminals listening, we're taking you down. To those who want to help protect their homes, call the security experts to try the LiveWatch security system. There are no long-term contracts, and if you're not completely satisfied, you can cancel at any time. Try LiveWatch now by calling 1-800-670-9259. That's 1-800-670-9259. There are hundreds of silver products on the market today, but there's nothing like the astonishing health benefits of the multi-patented One Silver Solution. Boost your immune system at a great price with our Silver Solution Liquid, starting at $12.95 a bottle, now available in regular and extra strength. That's half the price of the leading competitors. Call 844-USE-SILVER for your free catalog or go to onesilversolution.com, onesilversolution.com. There is only one Silver Solution. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state in back taxes, you know they'll never stop coming after you. With bank levies, wage garnishments, they'll even seize your home or business. The good news? A government program for tax debt forgiveness. It's called the Fresh Start Initiative. I'm Paul Sibley. With U.S. Tax Shield, we can help navigate the new laws, get you protected, and resolve your tax issues permanently. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield now for your free consultation and get a guaranteed quote to resolve your case. Call 800-436-6451. That's 800-436-6451. Hi, I'm Daryl W. Perry, and I need your help to give away my newest book. Yes, you heard that right. I want to give away my newest book, A Rebel's Journey. The book describes my path to the ideas of liberty, which began as a search for traditional values. I will only give away the book if I reach my fundraising goal of $2,500. But wait, there's more! If you donate, not only can you get the ebook and the audiobook for free, but you can get bonus audio content, including interviews with Jeffrey Tucker, Lynn Albrecht, Ben Stone, Gardner Goldsmith, and Stephen Kinsella. Or you can get a signed copy of the paperback book and more. Your donation will serve to replace the profits I would have earned through a more traditional publication of the book. The funds raised will allow me to get the book into the hands of more people and to promote the book to a wider audience. 
To find out more about the book or to donate, visit arebelsjourney.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. SWCPoker.eu is Bitcoin Poker 2.0, where players can buy chips, play, and cash out anonymously with Bitcoin. No banking, just Bitcoin. Texas Hold'em, Omaha Hold'em, Draw, and many new games, including Chinese Poker. SWC Poker gladly accepts players worldwide, and over 2 million hands of Bitcoin Poker have been dealt at SWCPoker.eu. Bitcoin Poker from the brand you trust. SWCPoker.eu. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Welcome to the program. Of course, you can bring up anything you'd like to discuss, but we are talking about Prison and recidivism rates, very, very high. Within five years of release, more than 75% of prisoners are arrested again. Now, of course, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're committing crimes with a victim. As we just did point out, there are a lot of people who get popped for violation of probation, or VOP, as right. it's called. Smoke and pot on probation. Yeah, which, of course, is a, is a victimless crime, but it's enough to get you thrown back in the clink for quite a while in a lot of places. Well, let's point out, um, I'd like to talk about real quick uh, what the sort of um, the supposed value is of uh, probation. Now, probation and parole are given to people who are released early. If you're if you are sentenced to 10 years in prison and you do 10 years to the day unless you're given sentenced to another whatever and you're sentencing to probation you're you're getting some amount of time on probation in order to sort of show that you're worthy of your early release. Yeah, aren't most people sentenced to probation but parole is for people who are released early? Yeah, parole is it doesn't exist um, in the state of Florida uh -huh. um, where I'm from they had good time or gain time is what they called it um, but you know People know it by different names in different places. But can you get probation if you're released early? Um, I mean, the jail doesn't determine that. That's usually the judge that orders pro probation, right? And that happens at yes. sentencing. But the difference the, – okay, so probation can be given to – for instance, in the state of Florida, mm -hmm. if your sentence is reduced, then you're given some amount of time on probation. They don't call it parole. But it's effectively parole because parole and probation are generally administered by the same people Got and it. the same rules apply. Our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. What's a better solution than the status quo? Because all the evidence is showing the status quo is encouraging people to reoffend. All the statistics, you know, we just had another study done on one county in Texas that made it very clear that prisoners would be more likely by 5.6% per quarter, uh, an additional 5.6% per quarter, to reoffend. So the longer they were in, the more likely uh, to commit other criminal acts once they get out. You can share your thoughts here also via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. Let's go back to the phones and the fun straight razor in Texas. You're on Free Talk Live at the end and Mark. Good evening, gentlemen. Love the uh, new intro music you guys have. Thanks. So um, It's Rebel Inc. is the name of the, the band. Go ahead. Cool. One of the biggest areas that I think needs to be uh, worked on is the domestic violence area. And, of course, I worked a lot of those calls because I wasn't working, uh, you know, BS calls for teenagers smoking pot or You're drinking. You're a or law whatever. enforcement officer, at least you were until recently. Uh, I, I was yeah. <laughs> until recently, but um, so most of the time, whenever I would go to a home, if if there had been a gambling ring, for if I was going to return to that home, I would be a millionaire right now. Like you'd know. Um, Yes, absolutely, and and that's and it's not because oh well it's it's a trailer or it's a mansion or it's whatever. It's because of the attitude of the the person whenever you're you're talking to somebody who has just been involved in in uh, domestic violence. You can kind of tell what's going to happen because basically 
putting someone in prison or in jail or even a short amount of time for domestic violence, you've pretty much ruined them if they have any type of really upstanding job. Um, so what, what happens, right? Nobody likes, nobody likes the guy, the wife beater, right? Like there's no, there's no way to look at that. And, uh, you know, that guy looks good. Exactly. So what happens is very few people have the, um, have the, the mind to say, okay, I have taken actions and that I have caused this. Most people turn to, it is that spouse's fault. So now you've got someone who says it is my spouse's fault. I can't get a job. I have to spend mm. all this time either in prison or in jail. Uh, I've got to pay money. Maybe they've taken my children. So what, is, what happens there? They just get more and more angry Bitter, at yeah. the situation. Sure. A little so, bit of alcohol and some bitterness, that always works out well. Exactly. Well, what do so, you think should be done well, with wife beaters? Um, and well, first of all, it goes both uh, ways. Yeah. What There's about husband beaters? Husband Cause that happens beaters. a lot. They don't too. get, they don't get the law called on um, them. That's not the as often, not as often. It's true. Yeah. So like, the violence, think, oh, hold on I just would... real quick. Statistic, statistically violence, um, domestic violence is equally split between males and females, but the people that have the law called on them because males are much less likely to call the law for um, violent females than violent females are for calling um, on males. Well, so, then wouldn't that mean the statistics are incorrect in that uh, if it's more likely that a man is going to not call, then wouldn't that mean that it's more likely that a female is going to commit violence? There, if Not if you look if you look at arrests, um, then you're going to say men are the uh, by far the mm -hmm. biggest beaters. If you start looking at polls and oh, polls. Uh, other okay. ways of, of uh, you know, looking at this, then men will say, yeah, you know, this happened to me. OK, gotcha. Exactly. So, so what should happen? Suggest, Sorry, go ahead, straight razor. I would suggest a, a, a better counseling system because most of this, most of the people that I've that I've uh, met and dealt with, it wasn't just all of a sudden they just started beating their wife one day mm -hmm. or their husband one day. This stuff kind of built up, you know, over time, and it was that final straw that that pushed them over the edge. Um, so that whole parent, that whole stereotype of, oh, well, he's just a, a wife beater, I didn't really find to be the truth. The other most effective way to stop the prison industrial complex, and unfortunately I don't think it's going to be possible, is to cut it off at the tap, which basically means better officers and uh, jury nullification. So that's going to be a much harder route, but it would be a much more effective because, um, you know, calls that actually need tending to would be tended to as opposed to um, going out to stop somebody from enjoying themselves on a weekend with a joint. Straight Razor, thanks for your call and the thoughts tonight. Let's continue. We've got, uh, let's see, Charlie is in Panama Panama City. Charlie, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. How's it going? Welcome, Good sir. Go ahead. Great show. Yep. Um, just a little background on myself. I, I was formerly an also a, a law enforcement officer. Um, and uh, I that my career ended because of uh, because of my conviction. Oh. I was uh, I was charged with a felony assault um, in California, but also I wasn't only just charged with that. Um, it was a bar fight um, that happened kind of just off to the side of the bar. Um, I, I I I beat the aggressor, um, so I, in, in turn I became the aggressor, and then I was charged yep. with also. Yep. It, this, uh, this is how it goes: is one guy goes to to the hospital, the other guy goes to jail. Um, is essentially how exactly. bar fights go. So, just to be clear, you weren't the aggressor; somebody aggressed against you, but you defeated him in the fight, and so therefore you went to jail. Exactly. I I in, well I I, I was originally going to be charged with um uh, with battery, then it then it then it was raised, and then it was raised again, um and so it was it was uh, it ended up being a great bodily injury uh, a felony assault with great bodily injury or battery obviously and i mean i don't know how many many of these details you want to get into but were there not witnesses this was a bar fight right so wouldn't it have been pretty it, easy well it it happened to the side of the bar it started in front of the bar and um they kind of just antagonized antagonized until finally you know as i walked away um and then it, it became more aggressive we were already on the side of the bar and by that time um the only person that was there was himself his friend and his girlfriend so i had zero you know backing on my oh, end no. so it's the, it, it can't became you know a guy that outweighed me by a good 40 pounds and we're about the same height uh 
he was the aggressor. He was into, you know, he's into a, a whole bunch of. I mean, mind you, I, I, I should, you know, I, I have, I should have been the better person to walk away because I have more to lose. But anyway, I, I got hit with a gang in, a type of injunction as well. Uh, it, it, basically, what they did is because because I, I, I you know, I, the damage that was done to him, which which I was 100 percent willing to pay for, whatever I needed to pay for. But um, I, I think that a lot of these cases need to be looked at as, as a case by case basis. Um, I, I was in jail for a little, you know, um, for about a quarter of a year. Um, for a waiting, where you were waiting trial? Recording? No, no, no. I, I, I bonded out, but, uh, you know, I never went to trial. Yeah, I, I was basically told I'll never win. I'll never win. There's no way because of the fact that, uh, he had a witness and that, and that, uh, and, and mind you, the, the gentleman didn't, uh, didn't refuse to appear in court. So it, my case almost got thrown out, but after the eighth month, of the uh, of the county continuously be- bugging the guy to get back to the court so they can convict me. And that's how I ended up getting convicted. So finally, so I you got did or you didn't go to trial. You took a you took a plea deal. I took a plea deal. Everybody does ninety nine point something percent. And very went, few fa- cases go to go to trial. And you went to jail for a quarter of a year. Or how long was it? Exactly. I went to jail for about a hundred and uh, it was a little over half a year. It was one hundred and seventy four days. Like I, my math is terrible right now. At the end of the day, I worked the I'd been working since seven. But uh, now back to, to really to the story. I'm yeah, I want to hear more of the story. Stand by, Charlie. Former cop in California got in a bar fight. Said it wasn't. Uh, he didn't start it. But... I think dueling should be legal because at that point both parties consent. All right, there's more coming up here in moments. I don't know if he was consenting to it, though. It sounded like he was trying to walk away from it. Bill. More coming up. 855. <laughs> fought, 855, 450 free. Hour two's on the way. Hey, guys, I'm Tim Baker. I'm Daniel Brown. And I'm Sean Stewart. And we are the You, Me, and BTC podcast. Cryptocurrency decrypted. Us three chumps love to talk too much, and for some reason other people seem to enjoy it. That's why we started You, Me, and BTC, which, which is your Bitcoin and Liberty podcast. Find our show at youmeandbtc.com every Thursday. We also post Bitcoin-related reviews, opinion articles, and much more. Subscribe, like, and follow at youmeandbtc.com. How fast are Allegra gel caps? It's raking the leaves and loving it fast. How strong are Allegra gel caps? I'm running with my favorite workout partner, Strong. Non-drowsy Allegra gel caps give you noticeable relief of your toughest allergy symptoms. It starts working in just one hour, two times faster than Claritin's first dose, and stays strong for 24 hours. It's saying yes to pick up football with the guys, Strong. Allegra gel caps. Nothing's faster, nothing's stronger. Among OTC oral antihistamines. Use only as directed. Visit Allegra.com. CopBlock has quickly become the top police accountability group in the United States, and maybe even the world. With chapters across the globe, there's probably a group near you that you can join. If not, you can start your own. Besides joining a local CopBlock group, you can also give just $1 a month to the CopBlock network. Your contribution helps support the efforts of those who make CopBlock possible. So please join the CopBlock network now at copblock.lrn.fm. That's copblock.lrn.fm. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.LRN.FM or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.LRN.FM. That's apps.LRN.FM. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, July 25th, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.69 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,099 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $291. 
Antiwar.com reports visiting our bill yesterday on his second day in Iraq. U.S. Secretary of Defense Ash Carter praised the Kurdish Peshmerga, the paramilitary force of the Kurdistan regional government, as a model for the entire nation and indeed entire region in the war against the Islamic State. Following his meeting with Kurdish President Masoud Barzani, Carter said, We are trying to build a force throughout the territory of Iraq and someday in Syria that can do what the Peshmerga does. The Peshmerga has had some success in fighting the Islamic State head-on, certainly more than the Iraqi military has. This is likely because they haven't got the enormous morale problems the Iraqi military has struggled with. At the same time, the Peshmerga's ability to consistently beat the Islamic State has likely been overstated as the two sides often trade territory along their mutual frontier. How the U.S. could even theoretically copy this model elsewhere isn't clear either. The Peshmerga of Iraqi Kurdistan dates back generations and doesn't have analogous factions across the rest of Iraq and Syria. Creating myriad new military forces in the model of them across different cultures and multiple countries is no small ambition, and with the U.S. efforts to create a new faction in Syria yielding no more than a few dozen fighters, it's unclear how they can manage it. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. UPI reports shoplifting in Russia increased 44% in 2014 as a result of sanctions and plunging oil prices, according to data collected by the Federal Tax Service. In 2014, merchandise worth 930 million rubles, about 15.9 million U.S. dollars, was stolen from Russian stores. Goods like premium alcohol, sausage, eggs, coffee, cosmetics, and perfume were among the most shoplifted items. Experts told a Russian newspaper that the actual figures could be much higher as the reports count only losses reported to police. Most of the shoplifting took place in Moscow. The falling price of oil, combined with sanctions imposed against Russia by the West in connection with the annexation of Crimea, led the ruble to lose 40% of its value against the U.S. dollar in 2014. These factors contributed to the country's current economic crisis. As the ruble weakened, inflation soared, reaching 11.4% last year. Many Russians continue to live below the poverty line, approximately $165 a month. Alexei Kudrin, Russia's former finance minister, recently said the country would not start to recover for another year. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Fiat Chrysler will recall 1.4 million vehicles in the United States to install software to prevent hackers from gaining remote control over the engine, steering, and other systems in what federal officials said was the first such action of its kind. The announcement on Friday by Fiat Chrysler FCA, was made days after reports that cybersecurity researchers used a wireless connection to turn off a Jeep Cherokee's engine as it drove, increasing concerns about the safety of internet-enabled vehicles. The research Researchers used Fiat Chrysler's telematic system to break into a volunteer's Cherokee being driven on the highway and issue commands to the engine, steering, and brakes. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, said on Friday it would investigate whether FCA's solution to upgrade software was enough to protect consumers from hackers, although FCA said in its recall announcement that it was unaware of any injuries. A spokesman for NHTSA said that it was the first recall of vehicles because of concerns about cybersecurity and experts said they hoped it would send a shock through the auto industry and beyond. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Now that multiple Thomas E. Dewey High School sources have confirmed that junior Jessica Milley will soon begin putting out, with many speculating that she'll go all the way with her boyfriend Josh Gibson as early as this Friday, 
Millie's classmates have been quick to weigh in on the news. Jessica was sitting at this table when she told Erica that she was finally going to do Josh. Jessica's pretty hot, so I'm happy with her decision. I was pretty certain the next girl to start putting out would be Amy Courtley because everybody knows her mom's a slut. While the majority of students were somewhat surprised that Jessica might give it up at Andy Wheeler's house party this Friday, possibly on one of Wheeler's two basement couches, Millie's intentions didn't come as a shock to some. Now that the news is settling in, several Dewey High sources are suggesting that Millie's decision could cause a domino effect in which even more classmates begin putting out in the near future. I think I'm going to start putting out in January or February, definitely by prom. Keep checking TheOnion.com for more news as this story progresses. This is The Onion News Network. Back now with more Free Talk Live for you. You can call and join us here on the radio waves. You can talk about anything that might happen to be on your mind. We have been discussing the issue of prison and recidivism rates, the likelihood that somebody is going to go out uh, once they get out of prison and commit another crime. Uh, now, whether or not they actually commit a crime that's violent or destructive towards property is another question. Obviously, I don't consider someone going and smoking some pot or selling some drugs or whatever to actually be a crime because there's no victim there. So to some extent, the statistics might be skewed by the fact the war on drugs exists. There aren't a lot of pot dealers in prison. Not saying that there aren't. I'm I just saying there aren't with, a lot. I was in jail with a pot dealer. Jail is different uh, than prison. Yeah. I know that they have sent people to uh, prison for pot. Here in uh, New Hampshire, they do have uh, serious sentences for people who've sold marijuana. So it must happen. Um, but nonetheless... The point being made, there's been a new study that shows that the longer somebody stays in prison, the more likely they are to reoffend once they're released. And we've been talking with people in the first hour of the show, in case you're just tuning in, uh, who have had experience with this. People in law enforcement, as well as people who've been placed behind bars. Mark, you're somebody Free going, Talk Live, the only place where you can get both the convicts and the cops on the same show. It's true. And actually, right now, we have a cop who is a convict. <laughs> he was actually a former cop. Charlie is telling us, he's calling from Panama City, and he's still on the line. Uh, you were in California Arthur. as a cop, and you were actually uh, arrested for assault in a bar fight where you didn't actually even start the fight, but unfortunately the only witnesses to the fight were the friends of the other person who did start the fight, and so you took a plea deal, went to jail for a quarter of a year, and that's kind of where we left your story, I think. You got it. And, and you know, I, I even at some point, you know, I, I hired a very good law firm. I, I actually hired the same law firm that uh, – Casey Anthony had hired to get off of her um, to actually win her trial. Didn't work for her uh, either. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so um, I, I just I did everything I could. But uh, even if I we approached the victim and uh, we were actually going to try and settle outside of court, but even after after you know we were coming to an agreement with that, the court was still saying that the state still wanted to pursue charges no matter what. Mm. So yeah, they'll do I, that. I figured, exactly. And, and I feel that, you know, as part of our constitutional rights, we're allowed to have contract with, with whoever, you know, free association and whatnot. Like, we're, we're allowed to do this. If, if, then the state should meddle out of it. But the problem yep. is, is just like the, the, the caller prior to myself, is that we really do have a problem with um, with judges. You know, if you saw in Pennsylvania with the kids that went to jail, because, you know, for, for cash. And at, at the same time, I you know, the same system. Yeah. It is in place in California for recidivism of of, of convicts well, and and the money money for, for filling beds. Basically. What you're talking about here, I'm not saying that's not an incentive, but what you're talking about here is is that corporations are entities. Um, what you're dealing with Absolutely. when the state picks up the charge, it is a corporation. It is a um, you know this is a governmental corporation. It picks up the charge as though it's an entity. It has not been harmed. But it refuses to drop the charges. Even if you had made a deal with this individual with whom you had been in a bar fight and I wasn't there, I don't know what happened. If you made a deal with this individual um, where they dropped the charges, they can't drop the charges. The United They're States not in criminal, control of that. The United States not criminal justice system does not allow the victim to drop charges. The prosecutor longer. wants to get the uh, you know the conviction. They want to have the conviction for their records so they can go and run for some higher political office or whatever. They're using you. I they're using you and your situation to propel their own political career. And, um, and, and I, became, I got really fortunate because I was looking at, at five years um, in prison, 
And, uh, and with early release, I, I, I with California, I was looking at 3.5 years in prison. Um, but I guess the process it was like a, it was like an act of God or a, an act of, of some entity beyond ourselves. And um, the the uh, you know the, uh, the the district the district the DA the district attorney uh, the ADA he got promoted to another to another um, county position that was higher than what he was in the city we were in, and a new ADA came in, looked at the case individually, and said, you know what, this isn't as bad uh, as as I was told, and and it went from three because I, I went home you know back to Florida. To tell, to say goodbye to all my family. I'll see you in 3.5 years, hmm. and I'll be a convicted felon um, and also a, a, uh, a parolee of California. Yeah, and um, and basically, you know, you know, I, after leaving Florida, I, I I went to go, you know, accept what was going to happen to me, and everything changed to where I only had to spend 177 days in jail. Mind you, it, it was it was a very eye-opening experience because it, it, it reflects exactly what you guys are saying. Because even in the prison system, because I, I went from a county jail um, to to an actual uh, prison in um, right right outside of Bakersfield, California. And a lot of these guys, yes, you know, some of them, uh, I'd say some of them have gang relations, and they they were you know narcotic dealers, or or they they assaulted somebody with a deadly weapon, or, or what 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 have you. But a lot of them are like, oh, I I uh, I violated my parole, I violated I violated my probation. That's why oh, yeah. I'm here. And, and and one of them, and a lot of them were just like two stupid stories. Basically, a guy he was drunk, and then he was at you know a Del Taco, and and all of a sudden um, he he didn't want to leave because he wasn't done with his meal, and they called the cops. Boom, he's in jail, and he's in county, and he's in the county for for so long. Did you meet and anybody in prison that you put there? <laughs> no, I was actually afraid of that. I I, I went to. I went Seems to like a legitimate fear. <laughs> I, I, for a legitimate period, and they go, look, you know, they actually reassured me. Say, hey, look, you know, you're not going to have a problem. Just, just tell them, you know, <laughs> actually, they said, tell them what you did. You know, don't be afraid. Just tell them, because I, I'm prior military as well. Um, you know, and, and, and a lot of guys actually respect them because because uh, I would I would change. I would uh, I would go over their letters and, and then um, do a little spell check for them. If they had needed, a, you know, a question asked, you know, they had, they had, a, they had a question about history or anything like that because I'm college educated. Uh, I was former military, and I was also a law enforcement officer. Was there something, you know, and, and, uh, Charlie? I was just curious. I mean, as you were, a cop, how many years were you a police officer before this happened to you? I was in a law enforcement capacity for four years. Okay, so you've had a little but bit of ex- experience I, under your belt there. Uh, what were some of the? What was something that you learned that you probably never would have learned uh, because you went through this? You went through. You were prosecuted. You went to prison. A lot of cops don't go through any of that. Uh, what was it that was a you know a shocker for you? But the the, sh- the shocking thing to me was, was how um, if if let's say I was, I was you know in an operation with 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 local law enforcement we would we would uh we would it was like we it was like a brotherhood and then as soon as something happened um, how quickly everyone turns around and had zero like some guys would support me um, and and some of them would secretly support me. And then some, some would just because of their careers, they would just say, "Nope, not going to even deal with it." It, it was really, it, it, was, it was disheartening, and, and it was tough for me because you know you're in this band of brothers, um, and then you get you get shunned. That's su- that's what surprised that- me about this is that um, that you know in a bar fight, a, a cop can uh, somehow you know like this is going to be a problem for him. It it seemed like this should be just swept under the rug, but. Um, you know, I'm. You know, I'm. I'm going to go ahead and take your word for the story. Were you, but... Wait, just to clarify something, were no. you a cop in go the ahead. same place where these charges uh, hit you? Yes, okay. absolutely. I was. I, I was the city that I, that, I, that I got convicted in was the same area that I, most of my my uh, experience comes from. And because uh, we and do I'm see like, a lot of stories where the police will be given a pass. You know, there is the professional courtesy, as they call it. And, of course, obviously that's unfair, but it, it does happen. Why do you feel like, you know, was it that the prosecutor didn't like you? Or why do you feel they went after you with such gusto? I'm not, I'm not really sure. I wish I had an answer for that. Um, I, I just know even at some point when I would get letters from, from my superiors, um, and they didn't use the official letterhead of, of the department or, or the official letter, government letterhead. They would call into question the letter. So I would have to. Go, I would actually have to sit down with them and then say, "Hey, I, I'm going to verify this letter for you, and actually speak with them and have them speak with you." In order, each letter, you know, if it wasn't an official uh, letterhead, it, it got to that point. And I, I just, I can't put my finger down on exactly what it was. But um, and even when I got to um, 
you know, the, the actual prison, because I was put into a, uh, a type of program where they said, hey, if, you're, if, you, do, if you do a certain amount of time and, and you do well and you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't do anything wrong in prison or jail, then we'll, we'll let you off on three years probation. So, and, um, and of course, like, I was going to prison. I'm, I'm not going to go there and start selling drugs and I'm not going to start, you know, right. be, become part of a gang. You spent 171 days in. You didn't have time to sell drugs and become part of the gang. <laughs> exactly. Hey, Charlie, exactly. thanks for calling, sharing your story. Really detailed, yeah, no. informational, and enlightening. Thank you. Appreciate it. You think they just give out the drug dealerships uh, in prison? you gotta, you got to put in your time. One. All right, 855-450-FREE. <laughs> That's 855-450-3733. Your thoughts on the prison system. How to make it better. It's Free Talk Live. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. Okay, honey, I have to ask, and be honest here, have you been taking a little blue pill? Because things have been pretty good in the bedroom lately. No, I swear. You didn't pick anything up at the pharmacy last month in Cancun? No. Well, something's different. I have been taking that heart and body extract you bought me. But that's for your heart and to control your cholesterol. Well, I read HB extract also promotes healthy prostate function. I never guessed it would work this well, but... but you're glad it did. Oh, yeah. Heart and Body Extract is a 100% organic formula that promotes a strong heart, healthy arterial flow, better circulation, improves erectile and prostate gland function, and provides youthful energy, strength, and stamina. Find out more at heartandbodyextract.com. Heart and Body Extract, paired with healthy heart choices, is a winning combination. Call toll-free to order or for free information. 1-866-295-5305. one 295 5305 Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 357 while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Back. 
back now with more Free Talk Live, the live Saturday edition here at 855-450 free. You can comment on the prison system or whatever you want to discuss. With you tonight, it's Ian. And King Mark the First. ExpressCoin is the best choice for getting your cryptocurrencies, whether it's Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive at ExpressCoin.com. They're a licensed money services business, and you can get your cryptocurrency with money order or check. Just start up at ExpressCoin.com. Whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, they can help you out. You can do it from your smartphone with their app or just go straight through their website, ExpressCoin.com. Use coupon code FTL, like Free Talk Live, to get up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency with no transfer fee at all. Normally, you got to pay 3%, which is really an awesome price anyway. But if you use code FTL, the first 40 bucks, you save and you say big. So go to ExpressCoin.com to get your Bitcoin. Price has gone up over the last uh, few days. It's up close to the, what, 280, 290 range. Right 290, now. yeah. Very cool stuff. Could keep going up. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow. So go to ExpressCoin.com as we go to your calls and thoughts. We go first to Jacob. He's in Salt Lake, Utah. You're on Free Talk Live listening to LRN.FM. Go, Jacob. Hey, King Mark. Hey, Ian. Um, I was just, uh, I'm most, mostly calling about the uh, probation parole system. Yes, lo- yes, loyal uh, subject. <laughs> um, you know, I, yeah, it, it, you, people can say that it's, it's better than being in prison, but honestly, I, I, you know, I spent five years on, on probation, and all it did was make me stop caring about going back to, you know, to a cage, because it all came down to if my PO wanted to violate me, he was going to, no matter mm. what it was for. I, I mean, I've done numerous two-week whatever stretches for, like, for example, writing notes to a girl that he didn't approve. Um, wow. <laughs> or not having you did two weeks in jail for writing a note to a girl that he didn't approve? Yes. Okay, just wanted to be clear. And uh, or Was this a girl know, that you having... had been ordered to not contact? No. It was just someone that I didn't talk to him first about. What, you was, the, approve- what was the age difference between you and the girl? Uh, I think three years. What, what, what was your age and what was hers? At the time, she was she was eighteen and I was like twenty-one. Oh, 21. we lost you a little bit there. You kind of uh, your audio went pretty pretty silent. Oh, she we got she you. was eighteen and I was twenty-one. Gotcha. Uh, look, I've never heard of this. this. Is a new probation rule? Is there an actual rule that they have where anything uh, any anyone you want to communicate with, you've got to talk to the probation officer first? That sounds that's more insane than I've ever uh, heard. I believe it's more to their discretion, but I mean they're. At least my PO was happy to use that discretion, uh, you know, as he saw fit. How did he find you know, out other, you'd violated other that? that? Other things, uh, because the they found notes when he searched my apartment. Uh, which <laughs> yeah. they can do anytime. They can come over to your yeah. house. They can search through all your stuff. I, I mean, th- that's one of the things that makes me feel like I'd be better off in a prison cell. Just keep me in the damn oh, yeah. prison cell it, for a little while longer. This is what our friend Rich Paul did, who was a co-host on Free Talk Live for a little while. He uh, he ended up going back into jail with the negotiation that he would serve another six months in jail, that when he got out, they'd wipe away his probation. That way he couldn't keep VOPing, he, and he yeah. was more than willing to do that. I've heard people yeah. do this, uh, certainly willing to go back and, and these sorts of things. But I can tell you, as somebody who did eight and a half years in prison, I would have given my pinky finger mm-hmm. in order to <laughs> get out and do some probation. Please, dear God, yeah. let me do the, the double the sure. remainder of my sentence on probation. Please. I guess it just depends, right? I mean, if they leave you alone on probation, it's no big deal. But to have somebody in there tossing your house every day, and they, if they find a, you know, one bottle of alcohol, you go into yeah, the clink I, again. It's sure. crazy. It can I happen. Be, I went back to jail f- oh, a couple of different times over, you know, two can, two tall cans. You know that I one time, one time I was drinking on uh, Super Bowl Sunday, and they showed up. We had a guy who went back in because uh, that I know of somebody. Somebody went back in because his dad had a beer in the fridge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I heard of people. Uh, I knew people all the time. And the best part is, every time I went back, I met a whole new batch of friends. Oh, well, because, those aren't your friends. You know, <laughs> well, no, I, I'm, well, that's what I'm saying is, you know, as far as the revi- uh, recidivism or whatever, however you say it, yep. um, you know, you go in and you make these friends or people that, you know, you contact them on the outside and they're, you know, well, super coked up, robbing people and, you know, and, and they're not the people you want to be friends with, but... Well, you make they, friends with those in your environment. Be they also or, um, teach you about crime, right? Like, I mean, it, yeah. it happens all the time. Hey, Jacob, oh, yeah. anything else you want to share? Go ahead. Oh, 
I think I kind of covered it. Cool, Just, man. Uh, you know, I would not sacrifice my uh, constitutional rights anymore. I would. I'm gonna. If anything ever happens again, I'm gonna top out. Thanks for the the call tonight. I appreciate it. Toll free number tonight eight fifty five four fifty free. I guess it would depend. Like you know, depending on how much time there would be on probation versus time in jail. Like if I could avoid three years of probation by doing another three months in jail, Mm -hmm. I'll sit the three months. I've already been in for however long. So I'll just, you know, I'll just sit that out. I think that the stretch of uh, stretch in jail matters. Yeah. yeah, How long it is. So let's continue with your calls and thoughts here. Uh, Let's go to Gary because, you know, they can toss my cell in jail, but they're not going to likely find any beers or anything like that. Uh, Go ahead, Gary. You're on free talk live. Yeah. Hi. Um, My only interaction with the, penal system is a as a taxpayer but uh um i have an idea that uh you know a lot of the uh, time in prison uh it could be you know the recidivism could be cut down and you could uh, obtain some voluntary cooperation if there were some hope you know if Mm -hmm. the prisoners had hope i think if you could allow the prisoners to work and you know tell them right up front one third of your salary is going to go to your own upkeep a third is going to go to victim restoration and the one third you can start putting away for when you're out and you can get your own you know, bank account. So you're not just dumped right out on the street. That's an excellent you know, like proposal. That. Yeah. I mean, really, hope is the um, as a guy who had a 25 year sentence, um, I the only thing I had was hope. I kept you know, essentially going back to court in order to get my sentence reduced and and those sorts of things, I would essentially was buying hope from these uh, the, these attorneys. And ho- when you say you're going to do 85 percent of your time, as they do in the federal prison and in the, the state of Florida, and I'm not sure where else, um, you say to them, you know, you have no hope because 85 percent of 25 years might as well be 25 years. Yeah. Anything else you want to share, Gary? Go ahead. Thanks for your call, man. I appreciate it. Toll-free numbers 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Carl. He's in New Jersey. You're on Free Talk Live with the NMR. Go ahead, Carl. Yeah. Um, have you heard about uh, Bo Birdhall lately? Bo Birdhall. I That's the uh, absconding uh, uh, the, they... POW guy. Yeah, the guy that they traded five Taliban for to get him out of Afghanistan. He got caught up in a a drug raid in California, but they couldn't put anything on him. He said he was on leave. They called the Department of Defense about him. I guess they didn't get back to him too soon because they let him go. And they got back and said, uh, can you help us uh, get him back? And I'm thinking, get him back? He said he was on leave. Is he absent without leave? What's going on here? I, I don't I don't know. Hmm. I can't say I've been following that case at all. I wouldn't be surprised if no, somebody who uh, had been a POW for some period of time was trying to uh, deal with their PTSD with drugs, though. Yeah, but they didn't. Uh, they found nothing to, to charge him with. Uh, well, the there. story I'm seeing here is that uh, yeah. he was caught in a pot raid, so it's not like he was in a crack yeah. den or something like that. Hey, thanks, Carl, for the so, call tonight. Eight fifty five four fifty free. That's our toll-free number. You can join us here on the radio waves on this live Saturday edition, 855-450-FREE. Or try Skype. We do have that. No one's called Skype tonight. We've got full phone lines, so if you can't get through on the phones, Skype's your option. Skype username, lrn.fm. We'll come back with more Free Talk Live in moments. You are an individual with your own thoughts, decisions, and actions. So why should you be penalized for not enrolling in the subpar health insurance mandated by the government when you can be truly independent with Liberty HealthShare, a bold, innovative alternative allowing you to take back control and make your own decisions about your health care. Mention this ad when you call to learn more. 800-714-6993. That's 800-714-6993. Liberty HealthShare. Together, we are one. Want to listen to your favorite GCN hosts and programs without a radio signal or internet? Just call 605-562-4213. Get instant access to all GCN live feeds right on your phone, anywhere you want, anytime you want. 605-562-4213. It's our way of ensuring everyone has the opportunity to enjoy GCN. 605-562-4213. The future of talk radio. GCN. Our digital freedom is under attack. Look no further than Ross Ulbrich's life sentence to see that. 
After all, it's not Ross's freedom they're after. It's yours. It is bigger than Ross and bigger than a website. I think one website is by far less dangerous than the government trampling on our rule of law. The appeal is underway, and we've organized a grassroots fundraiser at thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. Up for grabs is Cody Wilson's Ghost Gunner, A Week in Costa Rica, My Magic Mud, Ghost Outside the Machine t-shirt. These prizes are really great. There's a ton more, so go to thecryptoshow.com slash free Ross. Please tell all your friends, share it up. Our grassroots tactics allow for 100% of all funds raised to go directly to freeross.org. So check out thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. And don't forget, freeross.org. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website or idea email me mark at freetalklive.com the three most important things you can do for free talk live are one share one episode a week on facebook or in some other social networking site two buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com three give five bucks a month to the amp program it's my firm belief that free talk live's amp program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty oriented organizations support all the organizations you love But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Saying that he was giving his co-workers at Marley Publishing just a few more days to catch on to him, local mentally unstable man Michael Redding told reporters he planned on exhibiting one or two more warning signs this week before, quote, finally doing this. I think I'll do just a couple of disconcerting things in front of people here at the office, maybe give them a day or two to take action through the appropriate channels. But if that doesn't happen, then I'm going through with it. The fully unhinged Redding, who plans on, quote, making this thing happen sometime next week, claims that despite displaying erratic and worrisome behavior around the office for the past few months, his actions have gone completely unreported by his coworkers. I definitely talked about my frustration with life in general, and I even discussed my fascination with all sorts of violence. But that still didn't throw up any red flags. We'll see if anyone catches on. Mike? I don't know him super well, but he's nice enough. He's quiet and he keeps to himself mostly, but I'm sure he'll come out of the shell. Just a matter of time. This is the Onion News Network. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. And of course, you can join us here toll free. Our number is 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We've got Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. Prison, the prison industrial complex, just moving people in like cattle, people who are nonviolent, many of them. A good chunk of uh, prisoners have not ever hurt anybody. They've just sold some drugs to other human beings on a voluntary, consensual basis. To me, that's not a crime. And we know that ending the war on drugs would go a long way towards lessening the burden on the prison system. But but even for people who did actually commit a real crime with a real victim, the, there's a lot of evidence that's showing that the prison system isn't helping those folks. And isn't that ultimately what it's supposed to do? To rehabilitate somebody? To make them able to get back into society and merge into it and not continue committing crimes? Well, according to another study, they're now showing that the the longer somebody sits quarterly in a prison cell increases pretty dramatically the likelihood that they're going to reoffend when they get out. And so we've just had a large conversation here, talked to people who are uh, former cops, uh, talked to former prisoners, one guy who was actually a former cop and a por- former prisoner. <laughs> uh, you can share your thoughts here, and also you can join us via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm to get your comments on the airwaves here. Let's go uh, first to your calls here. We've got actually two gyms on the line. We're going to go to the first gym, who is in Shelbyville, Indiana. Gym number one, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello, how are you? Hey, welcome, sir. I'm, hey, I'm excited to be online. Um, I can tell you my personal story. 
Uh, I was a flyer in the Navy, came back to Indiana, self-educated, raised a family, worked hard, owned my own homes, uh, I guess several. And the system, as you want to call it, the financial money-making system, which is called the feds, put me in federal prison, forged documents, and made a lot of money off of me and my lawyers. So I am indeed backing up and verifying what everybody else has been saying, a lot of the comments that you've heard from some of the young men that, that actually did commit a co- crime but was on probation. A lot of the people that I was in with, I was in for about a year, I did end up getting my case turned over. I went to the appellate system and got it thrown out. It's a rarity. Uh, wow. Um, it, it's in the federal rare. system, too. Yeah. Um, now, the yeah, only place you're going to get justice in the United States, if you're going to, you know, like I, I use the term loosely, um, is essentially through the appellate system. These uh, these local, these, right. these first-level courts, they stink. They're, there's nothing like justice. Jurors are a bunch of nincompoops. They don't have any business being sitting there judging somebody else's guilt. They want to get home so they can make dinner. They don't have, they, they don't care about people's lives. They assume because people are being uh, on trial that they're guilty the whole maximum that one is in innocent until proven guilty is crap that ought to be tossed away on the uh, waste pile of history um i'm sa- i'm sorry to say but they're in the criminal justice system in the united states i don't see justice that's right from the bottom to the top pure corruption habitual liars from the very bottom to the per- very top and you're Every talking about the bureaucrats person- yeah, every single person in this system, the from the marshals all the way up to the federal judge, each person along the way said, well, we wouldn't have done this years ago, but unfortunately we have to move ahead. Hmm. Move ahead with what? So I was accused of lying on a gun form, so we're going after guns here. Now I have a lifetime carry permit. Like I said, I, I was a military veteran, no in, criminal history. So I'm, I went into a gun shop. I, I target shot, you know, spent hundreds of thousands of rounds over the last 15 years, and that's, that's what I like to do. Uh, we've got a big family farm, that sort of thing. Yep. So I go it's your hobby to put hole in pa- holes in paper. Yeah. So I, I go into a local gun shop, um, and, and, and obviously because of the Gestapo behavior that I have around me, I'll be a little bit more careful about, you know, pinpointing exactly who. But I went into a local gun shop, and they work in the, quote, system. It starts at the bottom level. The feds are alerted because it's exactly what you guys said earlier about them wanting to have aspirations of a political nature. So the district attorney got into the newspaper and said that I had four violent felonies which is false and a lie, because I've never had criminal history. Sounds like libel. That I was coming. Yeah, I was. Well, you, you can't sue while your attorneys are in play with them. And as this drags out for two years, you're being told that you can only do that for that two year period of time. And by the time you get out of prison and you get out of the appellate system, it's been well more than two years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what a that's scam. how they get by with it. Yeah, that's how they get by with it every time. So they claimed you thought, lied on a gun form, and they went after you for that. And I told them to go pound sand, so they came back after me and said, well, you lied, and you said that you lied about your address. Of course I did not. Jeez. Go pound sand again. So I'm one of the very few people that not only did I fight it through the appellate system, but I fought it up front. I called them for what they were, flat-out liars. And how much did this all cost you? Like you said, you couldn't file a suit because it was too late. What did you end up spending? I'm out out of of actual wages and lawyer fees, over $250,000. I'm at at least over And and this is the other thing, uh, right, $250,000, a quarter million dollars you spend over some bullcrap form. form. They don't spend any of their money. They spend taxpayer money. This is why there is no justice in the system, because, I mean, they get to decide who they're going after. They have no consequences. There's no skin in the game. You don't play poker right. against a guy who has, um, you know, he's playing with other people's money or whatever. He's got no consequences. That's Jim. right. 
So Go ahead. when when they come through when they come through this and they send you to prison, they still think somehow I don't I don't know how that you're going to back down. Well, of course you're going to back down because how can you afford thirty thousand dollar appellate system attorneys while you're in prison? The average Thank person God can't, especially I, after they've gone and frozen that's your correct. bank accounts. Right. So what I did is I had real estate that was paid for. Not too many people have that. That's nope. I had I had one in particular. I transferred it to my parents, and they could pay the 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 mm. appeal system attorney. Once that's, again, that's justice for the people that actually have the resources to fight. Hey, Jim, thanks for your call, man. I appreciate you sharing that story tonight. And uh, congratulations on your success. I'm putting quotes around, air quotes around success. Like he didn't have to spend too much time in prison because he successfully appealed, but it cost him big time, all because of a paperwork snafu. I, hey, I can I can feel his pain to some extent. I also got arrested on uh, paperwork issues here in New Hampshire. Boy, talk about another reason to not buy a gun through the system. If you screw up the paperwork, they're going to come at you with federal criminal charges for that. I mean, I, well, in New Hampshire, you don't have to. You, know, right, you don't New, have to fill out a piece of paper. Yeah, you right? do. If you go to the store, if okay. you go to the gun store and you buy brand new, the go, those gun stores are licensed. So dealers. that's a federal. They, that's a federal issue. Okay. Yeah. So in New Hampshire, you can just buy something from another human being. If that person knows you personally, they can sell you a gun, or you know, if they're acquainted you with you. I'm not sure what the exact legal wording is, but essentially, as long as you know, as long as the person's seen you or they know who you are. They can sell you a gun in New Hampshire. So it's not a hard thing to buy a, a used gun here. Anyway, just ridiculous story. Thanks for sharing it, Jim. We're going to continue with your calls and thoughts. Let's uh, go next to Jonathan. He's in Madison, Wisconsin, listening to the Mike 92.1 WXXM. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, I was just calling. Uh, I mean, I think you hit the, you know, the whatever, the, the, the nail on the head or whatever. Anyway, like, it's like the system is fundamentally flawed. You know what I mean? To talk about it talk around it or be like wow like you got screwed over like it's like yeah you know what i mean like the whole way the the prison system and the jail system was set up was you know to protect like rich white people and maintain social order you know what i mean so it's like well, course, there's, there, uh, there are a surprising are amount of rich white you know. people that get caught up in this stuff, too. Um, I think I know, that it's I'm... gotten so rapacious. I wouldn't disagree with your statement, but I would uh, I would say it's gotten so rapacious, it's after those people, too. Stand by, Jonathan. If you have a more comment, I can bring it back. 855-450-FREEZE, our toll-free number. We've got Skype as well. It's Skype username, lrn.fm. We're Free Talk Live coming up. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. The human body is more than 60% water. Your brain and muscles are 75% water. And your blood is 92% water. Water is vital to your body, and alkalizing your water is the key to keep it running at its best. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops keep your entire body healthy, boosts energy, promotes weight loss, and even fights cancer. Call 800-518-7615 or go to AlkaVision.com to find out more. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. We, we, we are a survival company. We manufacture our own line of Level 3 and Level 3A body armor. We proudly make our armor 100% in America. We have the best prices in the nation, about $125 cheaper than our nearest competitor. All lab certified, for thou art my rock and my fortress, Psalm 31.3. We are Fortress Survival, LLC. Dot, dot, dot com. 
What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 85% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. If you're a regular reader of FreeKeene.com, you know there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at FreeKeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at FreeKeen.com. That's FreeKeen.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills... Would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. It's Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want toll-free. 855-450-FREE. That's our number. We've got Skype. The Skype username is lrn.fm. We're going to go right back into your phone calls and thoughts, but I also want to let you know how to get 25% off or more or less. It's your choice. You get to choose how much you get a discount over at Amazon. Mark, you are wearing... A hat right now, a very fine hat. It is a kind of a crown-looking thing, but it's made out of plush. I am a king, after all. I am the intergalactic king of everything. You got that at 25% off on Amazon, right? Yes. I got my headphones that I'm wearing at 29% off on Amazon. They're nice headphones, but they don't make you a king. The average—I never claimed they did. Uh, the average uh, discount in the United States at purse— which is how you get 20% off on Amazon, is 20% off. So that's the average. You can get 5% off instantly. If you're willing to wait, though, you can get 20 25% off, no problem, on pretty much anything you want to buy through Amazon. The thing is, you got to pay with Bitcoin. That's how you get this deal. You go to purse.freetalklive.com. We, even if you don't have Bitcoin right now, go to purse.freetalklive.com. You can watch the intro video there. Makes it real simple, explains how this works, and boy, does it work, and it works well purse.freetalklive.com. Go get signed up. Once you do that, you can go through their regular website, and uh, it's the purse.freetalklive.com. Gets us a small amount of credit for each of your future purchases. So uh, please check it out. I think you're going to love it. I do. I've done like t- two dozen transactions through Purse. I've saved over $500 so far. It's awesome. So purse.freetalklive.com. Let's go right back to your calls and thoughts. Jonathan was on the line and still is in Madison listening to WXXM. Uh, you didn't have much time before the break there, Jonathan. Go ahead with uh, your thoughts. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, no, I mean, I guess I was just saying, like, you know, it's like the system itself is fundamentally flawed. So we shouldn't be surprised when people have these stories. Oh, know, I'm not surprised that, at all. You know, What's okay, the I'm flaw? Not you guys are surprised. But I mean, it's just like. What's I the mean, flaw with it, the system? I think there's a bunch of, of them. Yeah, I'm, I'm just asking uh, him. Well, white supremacy and capitalism just like a few like okay, so you know what um, I mean? like if we're if we're not what does that have to do like, i mean capitalism not, doesn't really have anything to do with the prison system necessarily right i mean the the prison system for the most part is yeah, run by the so government we, no but like um where are the prisons right <laughs> you know they're all saying? over the place they tend to be in the country right right they tend to be the economy 
<laughs> of that community. Yep. Right. That's, that's not true. capitalism. You know what I'm so that's, yeah, that's, that's not state capital. cronyism. When the when the government I backs. Know what I'm saying, and I'm. Well, it's and terms are important, okay? Saying, Let's use. No, I understand what you're saying, but you've used the term cannot, capitalism. I'm not gonna. Well, we're not gonna let I, this I, go. I, Hold that, on. Capitalism is when the government isn't involved. When the government's backing this um, forced redistribution of wealth, it's something entirely different. This might be called fascism. It might be called corporatism. It might be called oh, sure, uh, sure, sure, cronyism. Sure. It's not capitalism. It's, it's the money. Okay, my point. It's right, about the money. Capitalism. Yeah. But it's about the money, right? And I'm saying like the whole like. For America, the whole point of America was like, hey, money before anything. Like, hey, we'll kill a whole bunch of human beings. We'll sell them and breed them and make them work for nothing and abuse them. Well, getting rid of money money. isn't going to solve the problem. I mean, we we have to have money. It's a a method of exchange. But what I'm saying is, like, if we don't, like, address the fact that, like, you know, like, Look, you know, it's like, it's kind of like, you know, with the police, right? Like, you know, a lot of police are killing black people in particular. They're hmm, killing white people happening. too and Hispanics oh, yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the police well, are, I know, I'm not saying are all, it really, it's oh, mostly that the out. police go Listen, after poor out, people than, than anything Listen, else. Hear me, out. hear me out. Hear me out. I agree with you to a certain extent, right? Because if you're black, it doesn't matter your status. You're just black, right? Like Henry Gates, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're going home. You know what I'm saying? So no, I, I, I disagree that. entirely. My you know best friend saying? in the world's right. black, and I can tell you that, uh, you know, I've seen his interactions with police officers, and they're not bad simply because he's black. I really do believe it's a class issue, not a color issue. I'm not saying that. I'm saying yes, you are. Yeah, you're saying if you're black, you're just you're just black. But, but Jonathan, hang on a second <laughs> here. Uh, I'm going to go to Jonathan's defense on a, on one of these points. I mean, Levar Burton is certainly a successful black man. You know, mm-hmm. the guy yep. starred in uh, Star Trek and many other great movies, and uh, you know he says that he's scared when he gets pulled over by the police. He puts both right. of his hands up at the 10 and I the do two too, position. and I'm white. Yeah, I understand that. I'm just saying, you know, for some people, they I mean, feel intimidated. It's really, I mean, it's just kind of weird, right, for me to hear you say this. And I'm listening to you on the progressive radio station in Madison, Wisconsin, and you're really like, I don't think it's a black thing in the context of everything that's going on right now. I think it's a class thing. Bland, yeah, it's a power with thing, Sandra, really. With Sandra Bland, that wasn't a class thing. Hey, dude, there's been plenty of... Look, girl. hey, Jonathan, you know there's been saying? plenty of uh, people... If Sandra Bland yeah, would have been a white that, man... Listen. If Sandra Bland would have been a white man, you would have never heard about it. It's not like there's never been a white guy that's been killed by police officers in a cell. Jonathan, I've, we've got a jail listen, here in New Hampshire, which saying, is— Listen, I'm not saying that white people don't get targeted or killed by the police. I'm not saying that the police fundamentally have a problem and systematically, like, corrupt. And, like, people are targeted because of class, because of race. Those are factors, class and race. Race is a factor— by itself. Right. So I think everybody's lives matter. I think race is a factor. I, I will agree I with think you that's that I think true. race is a factor. Jonathan, thank you for the call itself. tonight. We're doing a lot of crosstalk, and it's just not, it's hard to listen to that. So thank you for the call. Um, I agree that in some places, race is definitely a factor. I think that's probably true. Um, I would. I, I just don't think that race is the biggest factor. I think it has to do with what you're wearing, uh, you know, the car you drive, the neighborhood yeah. you're in. Um, yeah, I think the color of your skin, your gender, a variety of things. Trayvon Martin, if it, Trayvon Martin would have been a, a, you know, a white girl instead of a black boy, things probably would have been different, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm not. But but that's a you know, it has to do with the clothing, it has to do with the gender, it has to do with the color, it has to do with a lot of things. And I don't believe in using short hand to get to problems and um you know <laughs> that's shorthand i'm not interested in the shorthand there's a jail here in new hampshire called valley street in manchester and the people that have spent time inside valley street have told me that one person dies mysteriously every month in that place they're not getting any kind of fanfare or any major mainstream media attention. There are a lot of people, both you know, white, black, Hispanic, whatever, mostly male, uh, that are perishing in prisons under questionable circumstances. And you know, how much of that is getting the same level of attention as this young lady? Not very much. Now, that's not to say that what happened to her doesn't matter. It certainly does. And what happened to her is uh, something worth looking into. Uh, but all of them are worth looking into. All of the people who've died mysteriously under questionable circumstances in the hands of these prisons around the country are each individual tragedies, and they all have family members and friends who cared about them, 
but they don't all get the same level of treatment in the uh, in the mainstream media. And I don't think it's, you know, conservative or a progressive issue or anything like that. He mentioned that we're on the mic in uh, in Madison, which is a progressive station. We're on a bunch of different kind of radio stations. We're not a conservative talk show. We're not a progressive talk show. We're a liberty Also, we look show. at the yeah, we look at the issues um, as we see them. I don't take my marching orders from Joe Biden or George Bush. I'm not interested in that. Here's Neither of them want to reform the prison system. Here's from new here's some news for you. Progressive politicians, they're liars too. Absolutely. I mean, the progressive politicians haven't done a damn thing to change the prison system. Neither have the conservatives. It's just, it's just all getting worse Look at over the progressive time. places. It's not like their prison systems are better. <laughs> all right, let's continue here. I believe we have Mac in Washington. You're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead, Mac. Uh, well, earlier you guys were talking about um, uh, a situation where the state has the option of picking up a case, and even if two people don't want you know, if there's some kind of altercation or whatever, and both parties are saying, no, no, we don't, uh, we're not interested in filing charges or prosecuting or whatever, that the state will go ahead and pick it up. And, I, you know, I guess most of the time that's bad, but it happened to me actually once about 20, 25 years ago, and it actually worked out to my favor. Um, long story short, a guy sort of lunged uh, with, as far as I can tell, the clear intent to attack uh, my girlfriend, he lunged at her <clears throat> and I gave him, I sort of intervened and gave him a shove. And I mean, like a big football shove where he sort of went up off his feet and landed on his ass. Unfortunately for me, this was in the presence of the cops. And in fact, the only reason why I did anything at all was because the cops didn't, uh, they were just going to stand there and let the guy beat on my girl, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so I was hauled away, you know, face down on the, on the car, cuffed, put in the back seat, hauled downtown, fingerprinted, photographed, and all that stuff. Uh, I was bailed out, and they gave me – I'd never been arrested before. I hadn't, haven't been arrested since, actually. So I, I don't know if this is unusual or not, but they gave me this guy's card, and they said, well, he'll be calling you about case number X and such, and they wrote down the case number uh, and if, uh, if anything happens from this – well, it turns out that the guy didn't want to press charges. In fact, um, locally, he was sort of known as a guy that was a little bit off kilter, a little bit crazy. You're saying the and prosecutor the, um, didn't want to press charges or the victim didn't want to press charges? Well, the victim didn't want to press charges. So basically, I was on standby waiting to see if the prosecutor was going to take Stand by. Uh, well, uh, speaking of standing by, we're going to sure. make you do that here for a quick moment. Uh, more after the news with Mac and your calls are well as well at 855-450-FREE. It's Free Talk Live. If worse comes to worst... Will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. This is Shaquille O'Neal. And the Shaquettes. Reminding you that anytime, anytime is a good time. Good time. For the cooling, drying, fresh scent of Gold Bond powder spray. Like after the gym. Or a crowded elevator ride. Or golf. Or working with farm animals. Or a hard day's work. Like sports casting. You said it, ladies. Stay cool with Gold Bond powder spray. Stay cool with Gold Bond. <laughs> This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Ovaltine. Give your kids the nutrition they need to be their best. Visit us at OvaltineUSA.com. Telling your child about healthy food choices is important, but showing her what to eat goes a lot further. Have her help create the grocery list, then bring her to the store with you. Picking out healthy foods together helps kids get in the habit of thinking about what they're eating every day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, July 25th, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.69 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,099 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $291. Antiwar.com reports visiting our bill yesterday on his second day in Iraq, U.S. Secretary of Defense Ash Carter praised the Kurdish Peshmerga, the paramilitary force of the Kurdistan regional government, as a model for the entire nation and indeed entire region in the war against the Islamic State. Following his meeting with Kurdish President Masoud Barzani, Carter said, We are trying to build a force throughout the territory of Iraq and someday in Syria that can do what the Peshmerga does. The Peshmerga has had some success success in fighting the Islamic State head-on, certainly more than the Iraqi military has. This is likely because they haven't got the enormous morale problems the Iraqi military has struggled with. At the same time, the Peshmerga's ability to consistently beat the Islamic State has likely been overstated as the two sides often trade territory along their mutual frontier. How the U.S. could even theoretically copy this model elsewhere isn't clear either. The Peshmerga of Iraqi Kurdistan dates back generations and doesn't have analogous factions across the rest of Iraq and Syria. Creating myriad new military forces in the model of them across different cultures and multiple countries is no small ambition, and with the U.S. efforts to create a new faction in Syria yielding no more than a few dozen fighters, it's unclear how they can manage it. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. UPI reports shoplifting in Russia increased 44% in 2014 as a result of sanctions and plunging oil prices, according to data collected by the Federal Tax Service. In 2014, merchandise worth 930 million rubles, about 15.9 million U.S. dollars, was stolen from Russian stores. Goods like premium alcohol, sausage, eggs, coffee, cosmetics, and perfume were among the most shoplifted items. Experts told a Russian newspaper that the actual figures could be much higher as the reports count only losses reported to police. Most of the shoplifting took place in Moscow. The falling price of oil, combined with sanctions imposed against Russia by the West in connection with the annexation of Crimea, led the ruble to lose 40% of its value against the U.S. dollar in 2014. These factors contributed to the country's current economic crisis. As the ruble weakened, inflation soared, reaching 11.4% last year. Many Russians continue to live below the poverty line, approximately $165 a month. Alexei Kudrin, Russia's former finance minister, recently said the country would not start to recover for another year. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Fiat Chrysler will recall 1.4 million vehicles in the United States to install software to prevent hackers from gaining remote control over the engine, steering, and other systems in what federal officials said was the first such action of its kind. The announcement on Friday by Fiat Chrysler, FCA, was made days after reports that cybersecurity researchers used a wireless connection to turn off a Jeep Cherokee's engine as it drove, increasing concerns about the safety of internet-enabled vehicles. The research Researchers used Fiat Chrysler's telematic system to break into a volunteer's Cherokee being driven on the highway and issue commands to the engine, steering, and brakes. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, said on Friday it would investigate whether FCA's solution to upgrade software was enough to protect consumers from hackers, although FCA said in its recall announcement that it was unaware of any injuries. A spokesman for NHTSA said that it was the first recall of vehicles because of concerns about cybersecurity and 
experts said they hoped it would send a shock through the auto industry and beyond. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Mere days before his upcoming relocation to Denver, Colorado, four-year Chicago resident Paul Marston admitted today that he wished he had taken a little more time to truly loathe the city he has lived in for nearly half a decade. You know, I've been here for a couple years, but now that I'm finally leaving, I realize I never really got to hate this place. Marsden confirmed that in the time he's lived in the city, he never quite managed to explore his own shitty neighborhood, adding that he regrets never getting to know the stuck-up workers at the cafe down the block, never visiting the overpriced bodega on his corner, and never becoming violently ill from the food at the crappy Mexican place across the street from him. You know, I lived right next to that bar for four years, and I just wish I took more time to abhor the disgusting smell that hits you every time you walk by. I'd always heard this place blows. I guess it's a shame I never got to hate it like I should. For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. This is Free Talk Live, and it's the live Saturday edition of the program. You can join us here. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Actually, the phones are loaded up, but we do have Skype available. So if you want to Skype into the show, Skype username is LRN.FM. With you tonight, it's Ian. And King Mark the i We've been talking about the prison system. There's all kinds of problems with it. Um, one of the major problems, there's a new study out that shows the longer somebody's in the prison system the more likely they are to reoffend when they get out. So clearly this whole punishment mentality isn't working. But what would work? Well, we talked about ending the war on drugs. That would take a big level of burden off the number of people that are in the system, but that still doesn't solve the issue of the fact that imprisoning people seems to be counterproductive. So how do we turn the prison system, whatever it you know is going to be, into something that is more productive, something that actually produces better people when they leave rather than more criminals when they leave. I mean, it almost sounds like an impossible task, but maybe not. Maybe there are some more humane methods. And I think Dr. Mary... I think there's cheaper methods. Dr. Mary Ruard, who are actually supposed to have the, on the show tomorrow night, which I'm excited about, um, not necessarily to talk about prisons, but in her book, Healing Our World, she does talk about having a, uh, you know, sort of a more a system that involves more choice and involves restitution. Meaning that when somebody com commits an actual crime with a victim, so not drugs, but an actual crime with a victim, that the victim is made whole by the person who committed the, the criminal act. We had a guy call in earlier who I think had a good proposal. He said, you know, one, you should be able to work in this prison. One third of the money should go to pay for the cost of imprisoning you. One third of the money should go to the person who is the victim. And then one third of the money should be put into a bank account so you actually have a little nest egg when you get out of prison. I thought that was a real sensible concept. It'd be a lot better than what, uh, what we have today. There should also be options on which job you work for because if you all have to work at the same, right. um, you know, the same job, uh, whatever it is, then there's no competition and that's just slave labor again. Well, one of the other suggestions Ruart gives in her book is that there could be a choice of prisons, meaning that different prisons could try to sort of sell themselves to somebody who was going to have to check in, so to speak. Yeah, compete for the business. Yeah. And so that would make the prisons a better institution because they'd be more concerned with actually providing real, uh, you know, changes in somebody's life to help them more so than just simply keep them in a cage and also help make the victim whole. So I think those are some ideas. But what about you? What do you want to share with us? You can join us here toll free at 855-450 free. We were actually on the line with Mac and he was telling us about a, uh, a situation that involved an attacker. You were outside of, uh, was it a bar, Mac, at the time? Uh, no, actually, it's kind of a crazy thing. He came running up into our yard. That was oh. the other thing. You were at yeah, home. Yeah, the dude. He, uh, yeah, we were home. We were ju we were just pulling in uh, with some groceries. He comes running up our hill. We lived on a great hill, and he comes running up. He was totally out of breath. He was not not in very good physical condition. And uh, after he caught his breath, he accused my wife of throwing a rock at him. And I said, well, or my girlfriend rather. And I said, well, she never threw anything at you. I don't know what you're talking about, buddy. Get off my property. He goes, well, I'll be back with the police. Well, oh. that's when this whole thing happened. So he basically, during the interview with the with the cops, he lunged at my uh, my girl. I got in between 
the middle of them. The cops didn't look like they were going to do anything, and I'm not going to stand there and let, let her get attacked. So I jumped in the middle. I gave him a big football player-type shove uh, where he basically landed on his butt. And uh, I got arrested all the way. And uh, at the end, you know— it, And you said he didn't want to press ago, charges. So, well, that's what it came down to. So I, here I am thinking, all right, I'm going to sit here in the in the in the clink, and you know he's going to press charges, and then it's going to be a whatever third or fourth degree misdemeanor felony uh, or uh, misdemeanor assault or whatever. I don't know. Like I said, man, I've never been arrested. I don't know mm-hmm. nothing about this stuff. So uh, it turns out he didn't want to press charges, and um, I was given this card at the end of it all, basically almost like a handshake and a pat on the back in in a way it was really weird because uh, he was a well-known nut he was a local sort of crazy guy that was always causing trouble and um they handed me this guy's business card with a handwritten case number at the bottom and said well we'll get in touch with you with you if the da decides he's going to pick it up uh, or the prosecutor or whatever you know I'm, I'm not using the right words i'm sure uh and so I waited and waited, and I thought, man, should I call? A few weeks goes by. I never heard anything. So I uh, said, should I call this number or should I just leave it be? Well, hmm. I decided to go ahead and call the number, and they said, no, no, they're not going to pick it up. And they they didn't really say, but they sort of implied that, it, look, this guy's always going around causing trouble. He's always accusing people of doing crazy so things. So your premise you know. to this was that uh, the state having the ability to pick up charges that other people, um, you know, choose not to pick up for whatever reason, benefited you in some way. And well, I, I don't think you've made your case way, here that uh, that, no, that, that you benefited you. I think you're right because uh, I basically it didn't really benefit me, but it didn't harm me like where I'm from. I'm from where you guys. Are Congratulations. From That's a big <laughs> difference. They, that's a big difference. Yeah, I, th- I think they, I think they would have picked it up in Florida, man. I think they would have run me right through the ringer. But uh, where I was at that time, come on vacation, I'm leave on probation. State. Yeah, that's what they said. Yeah, uh, I, I think that I, I think I lucked out just by my geographic. So, so yeah, you're absolutely right. The premise that I well, it's certainly if the prosecutor wrong. is more intimate with the characters involved, then maybe they would make a more judicious or reasoned decision, which is what it sounds like in your case. They knew who this guy was. Whereas if they yeah. didn't know those things, they likely would have gone ahead with those charges. Mac, thanks for the call tonight. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Nick's in Indy listening to WIBC on FM. Hey, Nick. Hey. Uh, basically, the prison system is all about money. And uh, I think it's pretty sad how you can get 25 to 40 years for selling drugs and 10 to 15 years for murder or manslaughter. It's crazy. I think it's completely backwards on that. And the whole fact is it doesn't help with the drugs because it's a proven fact that more people come out of prison drug addicts than when they go in. Hmm. You know, and I'd have to hear more about I that. I, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm not going to claim that prison uh, helps uh, drug addiction very much. But uh, what else know, have you got to do? You might as well get some drugs and get high in there. They're extraordinarily expensive. Well, um, I would point that out. Um, having be the only person around here that spent any kind of time in prison, I'm going to tell you that yep. a tenth of a gram was ten dollars, and this was in the '90s. Um, this is an yeah, incredibly small if you're amount. The real stuff, right? And in prison, you can't you can't drug test in prison. That's for sure. You're limited as to what you can get. Yeah, you know, I got more interesting drugs than that i was in for eight and a half years that's a long that's time that's what i'm frame. saying what else you got to do you don't develop a crack addict <laughs> addiction in prison unless you are extraordinarily wealthy i see what you're saying <laughs> nick but i know suboxone nowadays goes for about a hundred dollars a piece in prison so wow you know that's a lot of money but i don't know what suboxone is and, that's um, a drug to help people get off heroin addiction if i'm not mistaken is that right nick y- yeah it is in uh I think a lot of people reoffend is uh, a lot of people don't think about it, but you know, you go into prison, you come out, and you're still a felon, and you can't get a job anywhere because yep. no one hires felons. So, you know, the only way you can make money is you either sell drugs again or commit more crimes. And That's what they're saying here sad. in the story over at Gizmodo. We actually opened the program with the statistics, this new study. Uh, they suggest that one of the big reasons why people reoffend is because they can't get work. It's very, very hard 
to get a job as a felon. Nick, thanks for your call tonight, man. I appreciate it. Our toll-free number is 855-453-LET'S well, go. There's a lot of government rules that restrict um, what fel- felons can do, too. And, yeah. like, for instance, you get, really can't be an over-the-road trucker as a felon because you oh, can't man. cross into Canada because Canada won't let you. That's a Canadian drug, um, a Canadian rule, and it's really a, it's a rather stupid one. I've been to more than a dozen countries yeah. upon uh, since I've gotten out. But Canada doesn't get my money. Steven, Actually, I did go to Canada. Hey, Stephen's in Indianapolis. You're on Free Talk Live. Stephen, go ahead. Hey, I just, you know, I'm going to take a totally opposite standpoint. I think it's the way the prison system runs that's the problem because I'd have you on a 24-hour lockdown, no, no communication with anybody else, and, you know, maybe uh, you wouldn't develop bad habits and prison would be bad for you. Well, stand by, Stephen. I'd like you to explain a little bit more about what your vision is for the way things should be run, because the statistics are showing that people are more likely to reoffend when they get out of prison. These harsh punishments are resulting in people being hopeless and having, you know, nothing to live for. So screw it. Just keep committing some crimes. Can't get a job when you get out. But you're saying punish them harder. At least that's what I understand. So we'll come back with more. Sounds like an emotional standpoint backed by nothing. Hopefully Stephen can explain himself. 855 450 free. That's the toll free number. And Mark again was in prison. So this should be an interesting conversation coming up. We're on the way here with Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now, don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. In the U.S. alone, a home invasion occurs every 13 seconds. On top of that, the average response time for 911 is over 15 minutes. That just won't cut it. Don't allow yourself or the important people in your life to be victims. When seconds matter, don't be caught stumbling for your firearm. Get the protection you deserve. Get yourself a hidden holster from hiddenholster.com. It's the original hidden holster. The hidden holster is quick, easy, and convenient. It's versatile enough for the home, workplace, or virtually anywhere else you might need it. Have peace of mind with your firearm close by at all times. Go to HiddenHolster.com. That's HiddenHolster.com. If you own a firearm, you need a Hidden Holster. Your protection matters, and self-defense is the best defense. Go to HiddenHolster.com. That's HiddenHolster.com. The original Hidden Holster. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. 
Trend.fm is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for lrn.fm in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to lrn.fm. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live. You can join us toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733, talking about the prison system. How could it be improved? Because right now it's pretty awful, and there are a lot of reasons for it. And expensive. And it is expensive. So, you know, what can we do to change that? That's one of the big questions on the table tonight. Also, we've been hearing from people's personal experiences as to what it was like you know, being behind bars, did they observe the same thing that the scientists are observing in the study? There's a new study out showing that uh, people are more likely to reoffend the longer they spend behind bars. Per quarter, it was like 5.6%. It would go up by 5.6% each quarter, the likelihood that somebody would go and get caught for some other crime when they're released from prison. So these long, harsh sentences seem to be having the opposite of their intended effects. However, Stephen in Indianapolis says it should be more harsh. And Stephen, you were just about to uh, explain your vision. For those who are just tuning in, can you tell us again what you briefly told us right before we went to break there? Well, I guess what I'm saying, there's, there's prison and there's jail. And if you're in prison, you're in prison. The fact that you can socialize with other inmates, watch TV, lift weights, and all that. You know, I, I personally think prison should be a 24-hour-a-day lockdown. You get fed, you get you get housed, and that's it. So do you think and that this— maybe if you're— uh, Go ahead, I'm Okay, sorry. do you think that that should—does that mean that we're talking about the same sentences here? Are you talking about shortening sentences and having sort of a more rigorous uh, incarceration uh, period, or are you just saying that, um, you know, let's just make the incarceration that already exists more harsh? I think we make the incarceration that already exists more harsh. What's but the point? you're talking about a nonviolent crime, well, that's I can a- understand that. Most jailed. most that's, people that's in federal prison are in for non for drug crimes, um, and that's not a violent crime. What is it? Seventy percent, something like that. It's Some insane. number like that. And then yeah, when you, you know, I'm sorry, you can't classify a drug crime as a nonviolent crime. Yes, because I can. You got people that are, you get people that are caught with having drugs in their car, and then you got people that can't afford drugs, so they buy them and sell seventy five percent of it to somebody else to support their habit. What's the and violent what crime there? The you bank. just told me about people buying and selling drugs. Where was the violent crime? The violent crime comes from the, their actions of buying it and not being able to afford it. So they sell 75% of it on the street that turns into That's violence. not violence, That's sir. not violence. That's sales. That's selling a product that other people voluntarily want to purchase from you. There's nothing violent about any of that. Repl- right? if you're replace the word replace they, the word drugs with milkshake, and you'll realize that there's no violence involved. <laughs> well, a milkshake didn't lead anybody to uh, shoot somebody else because they didn't get paid. Most drug most drug users aren't shooting people over money. Um, like that's you're talking about. Yeah, okay, so if I if somebody steals a whole bunch of milkshake from me and I decide to defend my milkshakes with violence, you'd say that I was right in doing that, wouldn't it? Because they're my milkshakes. I would say it's a violent crime at that point. It's not a violent crime to defend your property. It is when your property is illegal. A milkshake yeah, but, isn't but legal. The, we, we're Drugs talking – okay, when you talk about legality, this is really important. Laws are made by politicians. A politician is a synonym liar. for a liar and a thief, Right. 
I, I don't necessarily agree with Not that. Not entirely I, every I, time, but generally we're talking about politicians yeah. here. You wouldn't trust them with your bank account, would you? No, but yeah, I... That's I what I'm talking about. Liars and thieves what? have written crap down on pieces of paper, and you're justifying it. I'm not justifying it. I'm just saying that drugs well, It's are not legal. violent. I mean, okay. If I tell you pot, that's wrong. If no, I it's not wrong. It's not wrong when politicians tell you you can't do something. Yeah, why would you let the... Well, hold on a second, Stephen. Why would you... Putting the whole prison issue aside for a moment, I'd like to come back to that. But why would sure. you think for a moment that politicians would be the arbiter of what is right and wrong? Well, unfortunately, that's the system we're with. I no, mean, sir, that's not. No, 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 no. That's we're a, not that's talking. A, yes, we're, not an that honest is the answer to the question. That's the system we're with. That doesn't make it right. You're calling in here advocating for what you believe should be the case, and okay, you're. Well, then I would tell you, people have a basic sense of morality. Okay. There are certain things inside our brains. We say this is a good idea or this is a bad yes, idea. And property is one of them. So taking my drugs is again a crime. Taking your drugs, taking something that's illegal to own. <laughs> He's right again, back to it. with the politicians. <laughs> Why don't you go out there and shine their little shoes for them? For God's <laughs> sake, we're talking about liars and thieves here. Well, you know, I'm just saying that when you give people, my whole point was prison is too easy. Yep. Well, I've now been in prison. You don't know the difference between crap something. and chocolate ice cream, okay? If you're saying it's someplace you don't want to be, I don't want to be there. I don't want to be locked down. Who has ever hours told you they want to be in prison, sir? <laughs> well, you know what? You're, is this an epidemic sweeping yes, America? Lady, says, Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea, are people saying that they want to be in prison? But you can get drugs in prison. Yes, you can get drugs you in know? the street. <laughs> Yeah, but you can get them. You can get drugs. I mean, if speaking you no as a contact, person who spent eight and a half years in prison, I never saw one, not even one, beating on the door trying to come back in. Did you see anybody that was innocent in there? Uh, well, I saw a few. Did they tell you? I mean, did everybody tell you I didn't do it? I no, they really there. didn't. They owned up to it. I was a convict. Well, see, I, you get a lot you know, of preconceptions murder. about inmates. I can see that. How long have you spent behind I bars, Stephen? I've been there. I know what I'm talking You've about. You've been there. How long have you spent and behind bars? I did five and a half. Five and a half years. And, and you, you know, think that it's going to be better if they make it harder? Yes. And <laughs> because you're not associating with people that are going to do all the shit that they oh, do. Oh, you can't say you that can't on say the radio. That. we got to let you go. Unfortunately. What he was trying to say there is that you're not associating with bad people in his vision where you're just kept in a cell, locked 24 hours a day, and you just are given meals. You're not allowed to work out. You're not allowed to watch TV. You're not allowed to associate. You're not allowed to talk to anybody else. And here's the reason why that's a terrible idea. Um, it makes people crazy. Because you'll go insane. It's considered human. It's considered torture by the UN for very yeah. good reason. Now, I get where he's coming from. Convicts aren't my favorite people either. I worked as the staff canteen op operator at the prison I worked at. I preferred dealing with the staff members than the inmates, mm -hmm. right? I'm not claiming these are a bunch of, uh, these guys weren't in for singing off key and choir. That wasn't the issue. What I'm trying, what we're talking about here is what's to make people better when they get out on the street. And I can tell you, keeping them alone in an isolation cube, um, a la Judge Dredd, is going to make them insane. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bad idea put forth by a person who, who clearly has not spent enough time thinking of studying on this issue. But at least he has gone to prison, though, Mark. So uh, you thought you had him on that one, but you didn't. Uh, I, he said he went to prison. I mean, yeah. I, 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 I have to take his word for it because he's called in, and I take people's word for the things they say. But, you know. I would have loved to have asked him had he not dropped the S-bomb on the uh, the airwaves. Uh, maybe he was hearkening back to his prison days when he likely had People use the S-bomb outside of prison, too, I've noticed. I can tell you I heard more cursing on average when I was in jail than when anywhere else. Yeah. More F-bombs in jail regularly. Why not? Uh, well, right. So, uh, all right. So, anyway, I would, I would have liked to have asked him, would have been, you know, would your stay have been better? Really? You would have liked to have spent five and a half years in a solitary confinement situation? 
maybe he never was put in solitary, so he doesn't know how bad it actually is. I did it for four and a half days for saying what seems to be the problem. Maybe it was three and a half days. We'll come back with more. 855-450 free. This is Free Talk Live's live Saturday show. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Hey guys, Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar! That's right, every Monday to Friday we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media, or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the ideas of liberty daily. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Of course, you can join us here talking about the prison system. A lot of people have opinions about it. Not very many people have been inside of it. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And apparently even some who have been inside are like self-beating uh, prisoners after the fact. The guy that just called in said he spent five and a half years in prison. Self-flagellating? Maybe that's what I was looking for. Anyway, spent five and a half years in prison, and he says it wasn't harsh enough that he needed... 
to be isolated from all of the other prisoners and kept in confinement, solitary confinement for the entire time, which will lead people to insanity. So I guess that would be the choice for him. Do you want to have people more likely to reoffend when they get out, which is what the current situation is, or would you like people to be absolutely insane when they're released? <laughs> because if you keep somebody in solitary, uh, it's not going to go very well. As you pointed out, Mark, it is considered torture. Uh, is that the Geneva Conventions that considers it torture? What, I'd have to go in the UN. I, I wasn't prepared for this question, but I think yeah. it's the UN. Um, but you know, confinement, uh, solitary confinement at the very least, not good for the human mind. We're a very gregarious creature. Keep in mind, a social creature. Yeah, we are. We're primates, and when you look at the other primates, they tend to like to hang out with other people. It's a rare individual. Other uh, primates, they, it's a rare individual that um, you know likes likes to be on their own and that's the if they like to be on their own they're the last person you want to put in solitary confinement because you're doing them a favor hey uh gold silver those are things you can't easily get when you're behind bars but you can get them on the outside and i would recommend that you do that go through gold.freetalklive.com hook up with some awesome hand-picked gold and silver pieces from midas resources these guys have been doing this for a long time they know what they're doing they've got some great product at great prices and gold and silver, of course, are a traditional hedge against inflation. They work very well for that over time. And you can look at them as an investment, even a barter currency. Whatever your reason for being interested in gold and silver, just as an alternative to the current government currency, it's a good one. Gold.freetalklive.com. Pick up as much silver and gold as your little heart desires through Midas Resources. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Or you can call them toll-free. Maybe you're not the internet and type... 877-857-9938 is their toll-free number. That's 877-857-9938. As we continue, it is Ian and Mark in the studio. And let's uh, go to the phones and to the fun. we got Shane. He's been waiting patiently in Bismarck, North Dakota. Hey, Shane. You're on the air. Hey, uh, I, you know, back, yep, back to what you were saying about uh, doing all your time as opposed to, to uh, taking uh, maybe the rest of your time on uh, some sort of probation. I too uh, opted to not take that route, and uh, to not uh, take probation. Yeah, to what, not take the probation. What was well, the wait, What was your do, choice do. when you opted to go and go to spend more time in prison? What What were they, you know, offering you for probation versus how much time you'd have to sit it off? It, uh, what What it was is I was already doing the time, mm -hmm. and uh, when you got short your last three months or so whatever the, the time frame was, I can't quite remember it exactly, but uh, the last, let's say the last 90 days, you get, what they would do is give you the ankle bracelet. <clears throat> and uh, I would watch other guys go on those, you know, take that, take that option. And uh, they had a term going where it would be, where those guys would get banked. And that means they would come back for whatever reason. With know, more time or just their same time? Sometimes they would get more time, depending on what the uh, what the uh, uh, offense was. But uh, uh, most of the time, if you wanted to take that option, it was it, you also had to pay. You had to pay for that mm -hmm. that extra, uh, you know, for that extra time out. They charge twenty and, bucks a day. Uh, the supervision. Yeah, you had the one guy call and say, uh, uh, you know, that they should have a, a a system where where you can earn money, and that that's actually what what I was doing at the time. I was on on a work release program doing my last uh, two years mm -hmm. and I ended up banking like 15 grand, you know, by the time I got out and, uh, uh, you know, when, when they when they were already taken in, and that was, that was just earning minimum wage, you know, yeah, but you, you chose work release over an ankle bra bracelet, right? No, no, no. What he was saying was the uh, ankle I, bracelet was later on, right? So you were on work release for two years, right. and then at the last three right. months. But that's what like, I'm saying. He chose work release over. No, a, no, it wasn't an over thing. He was on work release, and then later, toward the very end, they gave him the option for the ankle bracelet, right? Sure. Uh, in Illinois at the time, they would uh, progress you through the, these uh, stages the steps, of, yeah. of incarceration, right? And. Uh, uh, what form of car incarceration were you on? What it, what form of incarceration were you on when you refused to take the ankle bracelet? I was at the work release. So you chose work release over an ankle bracelet. Oh, Ian, I see what you mean by uh, that. That's okay. all I'm saying here is, is that work release is a pretty high level of release by my standards, mm -hmm. anyway, I can you know I, it's not like it's not like you picked uh, you know Rayford or San Quentin you know when you say that you, uh, you I know. would have though you know what 
I'm saying had no. Had, it it was sounds a, like uh, it sounds like your responsibility from my standpoint. You don't believe that you can handle yourself on um, this ankle bracelet. You just can't handle yourself around alcohol or drugs or what? Why? Oh no 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 no. It it wouldn't. They just like you would say they would uh, come. You would have you would have a, a curfew. You would have the yeah. Uh, that's really when you the had a actual, curfew at work uh, release, dude. Well, again, you know. The curfew wasn't imposed to the extent that it was for. I mean, when you got when you when you uh, failed uh, uh, the ankle bracelet, you didn't come back to work at least. You went, you were taken to prison. Okay. Yeah, I, I totally agree. What and was that, it that the offer was on the table? They so said here you could go on this ankle bracelet, or you can just continue on work release for three more months. If you went on the ankle bracelet, would it only be three months on the ankle bracelet, or would you go on to a longer term of probation? It would have been a uh, three months on the. When you, if you if you just exhausted your time to the end of your time that that uh you know you were sentenced with, you would go on to a parole that would only really affect you. The the uh, terms of the parole being uh, broken would only affect you if you committed another crime. They would say, listen, this guy this guy uh, committed a crime within the last six years, and before he could eat, whatever whatever uh, you were sentenced with was pretty much a, a parole time you were given. So you you decided like a, uh, three months. It was, so it was either going to be – it was one or the other. It was either three months continuing on work release or three months on this ankle bracelet where you'd have to pay per day to be on the ankle bracelet. Absolutely. And they could, t- they could toss your house, and they can, you know, VOP you for all kinds what of was crap. The, what was the daily payment for uh, this ankle bracelet? I, I don't remember, but I know just the initial payment to uh, go on to the program was like five hundred dollars. Five hundred bucks and is then, a lot uh, of money. Uh, well, five hundred dollars. You know, this is nine, mid nineties. You, yeah. you had to get a place to stay at the same time. You know, this all this stuff had to be prearranged. And for the ninety days, you know, it was ain't it worth, was it. worth it. And, and like you'd I already said, been in. I've done it. I've done it. And an you instant. are watching these guys. Yeah, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have done it. You'd only like been on. That. You only had ninety days left at that point. You're already out on work release. And then you're just basically checking into the jail to go to sleep at night. What's the big deal with that? Another ninety days of that? That's, That's not nothing. exactly right. Uh, work release. You're there when it's you're not, not at work. Yeah, and it's not. It's it, it's same with uh, the guy that just spoke about about uh, working out all day. When you're in prison, it's not. It's not uh, Shangri La behind bars. You know, if you don't. You, you, everybody's given an assignment. At least in Illinois, you're given an assignment, and from about 7 a.m. till till about 3 or 4 in the afternoon, you're on that assignment, yep. whether that be school or whether it be some sort of work duty. And then after that, you get to work out, and that's only like for two hours, you know, or something like yep. that. But, uh, you know, the people, there were people who chose, you know, hey, screw that. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, you know, you can't, you can't force me to do nothing. Well, then, you know, they're, they were on a relative lockdown. Yeah, for, they'll go to solitary. That was the same way in today. jail. Yeah, when I was in no jail working. for uh, yeah. almost 60 days on civil disobedience charges, it was the exact same way. You essentially were a slave for the county, and if you didn't want to do what they wanted, then they'd put you in lockdown for sure. Hey, thanks, Shane, for the call tonight. I appreciate your personal story there. I, I got to say, I disagree with you, Mark. I would have I would have agreed with Shane. Like, you know, he was right almost out. Why would you want to go and get all these extra restrictions placed on you? Just they're not so you know extra they're restrictions. Screw they're new freedoms. They're going to screw with you and then I, well, you're how do you VOP? know they're going to screw with you they don't screw with everybody who goes through they have a high level of workload now the cost i want to know what the cost is um now he said it's 20 bucks a day here in Keene, new hampshire for the ankle bracelet but they also charge probation you was release. 30 dollars a month when i was going through so there's there's a wide disparity in understandings of what these costs are yeah I'm, i was talking about the ankle bracelet that's I different from probation 855 450 free that's the toll free number but i'm also told that you get charged for work release here too, so in that case, it wouldn't have been quite as. You get charged for work release. Um, yeah, yeah. There's more coming up here in moments. We got enough time for you if you're on the line. It's Free Talk Live. If you could choose any school in the country to earn your college degree and be on your way to a better life, would you choose one the Wall Street Journal recognizes as producing some of the best qualified graduates, or one the Princeton Review ranks as a leader in undergraduate education? Or maybe one the U.S. News & World Report names among the most innovative schools in the country. Now, you don't have to choose. At Arizona State University, we want to help you learn to thrive in life. At ASU Online, we offer over 100 graduate and undergraduate programs on your time and schedule. You receive the exact same curriculum, degree, and prestigious faculty as the on-campus students, and we're universally recognized as one of the innovators in online learning technologies. 
For information, call 1-800-595-9736. U.S. News & World Report ranked ASU in the top 10 best places to earn an online degree. So learn to thrive with ASU Online. Call today at 1-800-595-9736. That's 1-800-595-9736. Would you like to use your IRA funds to buy precious metals and hold them at home? Are you wary of the stock market, paper gold, or faraway depositories? With a checkbook IRA, you may legally take custody of IRA-owned gold and silver. Call today and learn how IRA owners in all 50 states have already taken control. Call 844-MY-GOLD-2. That's the number 2, 844-MY-GOLD-2. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. We're back. Free Talk Live. A live Saturday edition of the program. Hey, if you don't get in tonight, because we do have full phone lines here. If you don't get in tonight, we got another show tomorrow night and another one after that. In fact, we do it seven nights per week. We're live. Our live hours are 7 to 10 at night Eastern time. So if you're listening live, that's great. If you're not listening live, you can still call the show when we're live and you can talk about anything you'd like to discuss. Tomorrow night, we are going to have a guest uh, to start the show out, which we don't do a whole lot. But this is a very special guest. She's actually been on the show one time previous, at least once. Uh, Dr. Mary Ruart, a, uh, a hero of mine, one of the authors of one of the most important books, I think, that I certainly one of the most important books I've read. And Many people would agree with you. It's a fine, fine book, uh, Healing Our World. Her name is Dr. Mary Ruart. She spoke, actually, at the, uh, you guys, Mark, was it last week? You were out, uh, yeah, it was last week. You were out at uh, like an award ceremony here in New Hampshire for the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. And she was speaking there. I'm looking forward to having her talk with us uh, on the air tomorrow night. She could be covering like the medical uh, business and government regulations, yeah, like that. 
And, of course, she'll make it interesting. Government regulation of the medical industry does not sound particularly like an interesting topic. She will have interesting things to say. Well, she's going to show how intellectual property laws um, make drugs more – well, not just intellectual property laws. The FDA – I think the premise of her her speech is the FDA kills people. We will find out more about that tomorrow night. And right now, your calls and thoughts here. Let's go quickly to Mark. He's listening in South Carolina. You're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead, Mark. Mark, hey, is... you, sir. hey there, you're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, you okay? Let me get you Quick. off speaker here. Dad Jones speaker. Uh, Quick you, like a bunny. You've been having a drink today, very Mark? Popular, sh- very popular show. Thank you. Yes, you got to go uh, quick. We got to get your thoughts out fast because I want to make room for other okay, folks. Okay, I was a police officer. Uh, and I went through the academy. There were several of us that uh, worked at for a while. Did you retire, or did were and, you? Um, did you leave for some other no, reason? No, 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 no. I I quit. Okay. One because it's hypocritical. The officers, a lot of the officers I were working with, uh, the, the ones that, that I was with were doing the same thing of the people they were arresting. <laughs> Thanks for the call, man. I appreciate it. I thought he was going to say they were drinking on the job. That's what we get for keeping him on hold for 45 minutes. He was powering him down while he was waiting. <laughs> Let's go to uh, – no, I mean, seriously, to, to what he had to say, it's certainly true. A lot of cops I, I don't think it discredits his uh, information, yeah. uh, you know, you know no, whatever. Just who knows? He just sounded – he's having, having a good time on Saturday night. Uh, Susan, listening in St. George, Utah, you're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead. Hey, um, I don't know if they want to hear from me because I've been on all the sides there is. <laughs> okay. But uh, I got, I'll got i have 31 years in recovery, August 4th, coming up. Congratulations. But, um, yeah, I hate prison. I, I We got 2 million people in prison in the United States. And probably more, yeah, my friend's saying more. But the brutal treatment, I mean, there's I've worked with um, people who've been in, like, Folsom and San Quentin, and, and I've got a son-in-law right now that's made his way after he did 10 years. But I uh, I helped start the NA program here after I was in the other 12-step program from being in jail. And I was one person in 400 that wanted out of that damn place. And I went through a treatment program, and I was the only one that made it out of 400 people. But wow. 20 years ago, I came down here to St. George, and the cops were just as corrupt as they could be. And we had, like, a really bad situation. But we had a judge. His name He just retired. His name's James Shoemate. And the guy, I think he's a saint because he he uh, started a program here to help people getting out of prisons and to keep them out called Drug Court. Yeah, Drug Court's uh, and, all around the United States, and, um, and you know it's yeah. it's been very and successful. Then they it at our, we have a prison here, Purgatory, that transports the prisoners from Draper, which is Utah State Prison, and all those. Well, they've got programs there now that they didn't have then, and then they've got programs up in Salt Lake where they're not putting the drug addicts in the back in the jail. They're trying to, you know, reform them. And so, but the the drug problem goes back to the immigration problems, which goes back to the politicians. Well, that we don't all have a chance to uh, to get into tonight. But thank you, Susan, for your call tonight. You know, with regard to drug court, you know, I don't really feel so great about drug court. I think that it. You could argue that, okay, if drug court actually keeps drug users out of jail, then that's a good thing. But on the other hand, it's not a particularly respectful process. They force people into treatment. They force people against their will to do things that they otherwise wouldn't choose to do on their own. And I don't, I don't think that's a way to help somebody. I mean, if it helps keep them out of jail, okay, I'll give them credit for that. That's good. But I've actually observed some drug court, and it seemed very intrusive the way they were treating this person and very rude they were treating this lady she was talking to somebody she wasn't supposed to be talking to her old drug dealer or something like that and you know they VOP'd her because of that or they punished her because she had you know violated that particular rule so it's just another court it's just another way for them to impose their viewpoint about what they There's should There's been a lot of successes from uh, drug court and I'm you know I'm for programs that have success and I'm, I'm for progress and I think drug court's progress but one thing that needs to be pointed out is there's been a lot of claims the drug 
courts being largely reserved for white offenders and that minority offenders are not uh, having mm-hmm. the opportunities that are afforded to drug court as often. Uh, let's go to Jim. He's in North Dakota. You're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, Ian, thanks for taking my call. Yes, uh, I was uh, just wanted to give a word of advice. Sometimes your best bet uh, not to reoffend uh, been 31 years for me. Yeah, uh, is to just relocate yourself and uh, get away from that uh, black cloud. Uh, I've tried to move back to my hometown a couple times, and every time I move back there, uh, word gets out that you're back in town or yep. what have you. You know, you got your locals that uh, bear down on you and. I wound up with helicopters flying over the house, uh, various things, you know what I mean? Jeez. And each time it drove me back out of there. So uh, I found my best bet is, you know, you stay away from uh, where the bad things happen, supposedly, you know what I mean? That hurt. Uh, it certainly helps. I mean, if it's your intention to make a better life for yourself and to change your habits, then going and getting a new setting can help. If change it, people, places, and things, as they say in NA. But if but Correct. if yeah. but if you don't have the real intention to change your habits, and then you go somewhere else, you'll just recreate all those old situations, right? I understand. That's that's correct. And you know, not everybody has the opportunity. Everybody has families and and things of that sort, to where it's not just easy to pick up and and start a new life. I understand all that. It's but, also the cost. Uh, um, the fact is, is when yeah, I got out of prison, I couldn't afford my own place. Um, I mm-hmm. got, you know, I got out. I had no money. It's not like I worked for any money in prison. And how right. was I going to afford a place? And so that can yeah. make can make it very difficult. Yeah, it's it's been an uphill battle for me, but uh, you know, we've we've uh, searched for work in in div- various places. You know. That's kind of followed me around. It was just a marijuana charge, you know, but each time I tried to go back to my hometown and try to make men's, you know, I'd stay there for a year and a half, two years. But, uh, you know, by that time, it. words out, you know, you've got surveillance on you. You've got it's it's like you've never changed your way. Yeah, you know, that's a good point. Smoking a joint, you know what I mean? Jim, good call. Thanks for sh- uh, sharing the thoughts. I've had helicopters fly over my place, and I've never even considered for a second they might be surveilling me. Bruce is in Panama. You're on Free Talk Live. Panama City, that is. Go ahead, Bruce. Yeah, I just want to say, you know, the court system is a cash register. And, yeah. you know, when you when you, uh, when you you go up against it, you're asking it to change with all of the people that benefit financially from something like that. Oh, yeah. It's, it's so entrenched. It. You're absolutely right, right now, Bruce. We're short on time, but I want to thank you for the call tonight. I appreciate it. No, he's absolutely right. It's so entrenched. These, uh, you know, moneyed interests, the prison industrial complex, as you described it earlier, Mark, these guys are going to come out and they're going to lobby against any kind of proposal. Like we talked about some of the ideas that might make this better. Private prison systems, too. Yeah, well, whoever's running the prisons, whether it's a privately run prison or it's a government run prison, it's still a monopoly on prisons being ultimately controlled by the state. Well, the fact and, is, is convicts don't have any representation. You can say anything bad yeah. you want about a convict, guilty or innocent or whatever, and you know, there's there's nothing out there. No one cares. I, I can't even Dave vote in the state of Florida. In here, Dave, in Indianapolis, you're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead. Hey, hippies. I had to agree with you tonight. One of the dumbest (laughs) things that the federal government makes us do is to fill out a form. I did it last night to buy a forty caliber handgun, and I got approved. Oh, oh joy! You know, I got approved by the federal government. You win. But it is one of the most. It is one of the most intimidating things that a lawful citizen has to do is to fill out a form and to actually uh, humor a question that says, "Have you ever committed a felony?" Now, obviously, if somebody's committed a felony, we all know they're probably not in a retail sporting goods store trying to buy it. <laughs> it is the dumbest damn in They pay less, the and they get it more easily. <laughs> hey, Dave, we're out of time, man. Thanks for the call. Uh, I appreciate it. Night. Good thoughts. <laughs> and But don't worry. We'll be back tomorrow. If you didn't get in tonight, call us tomorrow night. We'll talk to you then. Online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Enjoy your weekend. If you're looking for work, the person you are applying to is probably so swamped with applicants that he or she is tough to reach. So call early in the day, before 8 a.m., before the palace guards arrive. You'll need your prospect's direct number, and here's a sneaky way to get it. Suppose the company's main number is 555-5000. You should call 555 501 
two. When someone says, good morning, Pam Johnson, you should innocently say, oops, somebody here must have written this down wrong. I was calling for Tom Frederick. What's his direct number? If the very next thing you hear isn't Pam giving you Tom's number, it may be, good morning, Tom Frederick. For more tips for job seekers and getting better results in all your day-to-day communication, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The latest episode of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, July 25th, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.69 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,099 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $291. Antiwar.com reports visiting our bill yesterday on his second day in Iraq, U.S. Secretary of Defense Ash Carter praised the Kurdish Peshmerga, the paramilitary force of the Kurdistan regional government, as a model for the entire nation and indeed entire region in the war against the Islamic State. Following his meeting with Kurdish President Masoud Barzani, Carter said, We are trying to build a force throughout the territory of Iraq and someday in Syria that can do what the Peshmerga does. The Peshmerga has had some success in fighting the Islamic State head-on, certainly more than the Iraqi military has. This is likely because they haven't got the enormous morale problems the Iraqi military has struggled with. At the same time, the Peshmerga's ability to consistently beat the Islamic State has likely been overstated as the two sides often and trade territory along their mutual frontier. How the U.S. could even theoretically copy this model elsewhere isn't clear either. The Peshmerga of Iraqi Kurdistan dates back generations and doesn't have analogous factions across the rest of Iraq and Syria. Creating myriad new military forces in the model of them across different cultures and multiple countries is no small ambition, and with the U.S. efforts to create a new faction in Syria yielding no more than a few dozen fighters, it's unclear how they can manage it. 